everyone. Welcome to episode one of Tides of Wild Mount. This is our Wild Mount campaign. We had some technical issues, so we're starting a little bit late. Hopefully, we're still not having those audio issues. My uh, producer is going to let me know in a couple seconds here to make sure that my audio isn't doubling. We're good. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. I am Jason Azevedo from Realm Smith, and I have these wonderful people all around me. Uh, we are biding our time playing Wild Mount during the apocalypse right now. Uh, we have Sirenscape working, so we can hear it in our ears. Um, and just so everyone that's watching that was expecting maybe uh, Into the Mist tonight, so you know we've ended the, the uh, Into the Mist season which included the Curse of Strahd campaign, uh, and that will come back in three months. We'll be doing that after our Wild Mount campaign, which will last about 12 episodes, and we'll come back for Into the Mist, and that'll go till about Halloween, um, which is perfect for that campaign. Uh, we'll do some quick announcements, and then we'll do some introductions, and then we'll jump right in, because hopefully we can play for a while. Depends on if my players want to stay late. Uh, I know it's past some of their bedtimes, uh, but we will do our best. So want to thank first our title sponsor for the evening, of course, Sirenscape as usual. Woo, Sirenscape. You can hear them playing in the background. Sirenscape is a fantasy media player for your tabletop and RPG games. Um, you can go to sirenscape.com to download or access or their online player, and they have a bunch of free content that you can try out. Sirenscape.com, we'll use it for all of our stuff and all of our shows, and we love them very much, and thank them for joining us for our Wild Mount campaign. Also have some product sponsors that I would like to thank as well, of course. Uh, WizKids, as usual, for all of the uh, minis at the table. Dwarven Forge for a lot of the terrain. You can see some of it right here, all this magical Menagerie Coast terrain. They sent us another Dwarven load of Dwarvenite last week, and uh, we are so thankful to Nate uh, and Stefan for supporting the channel uh, and all of that. Please go to uh, DwarvenForge.com to check them out um, in this time. It's great terrain and indestructible and all of that stuff, and we will keep you posted on how you can kind of get more involved with Dwarven Forge as the season goes on um also want to thank uh mithril armories as our uh main yeah our main Armory. dice sponsor for this season you can check it out at mithrolarmories.com they make these really cool dice spinners they just finished a kickstarter uh and they raised over a hundred thousand dollars um canadian i think uh which is you know less <laughs> in the u.s but they did great <laughs> it was like i don't know how many thousand percent uh funded uh and they will be rolling them out soon and doing lots of other stuff so they will be with us for the entirety of the season as our dice sponsor and we want to thank them we also have one more <laughs> jewel we also have <laughs> i almost want to turn jewel's camera off until we're done announcements <laughs> we can't do that i'm just kidding i love you jewel uh he's swatting flies up there um want to thank hero forge is our brand new sponsor for the season uh they weren't with us last season but they are here we don't have our minis yet but we will be uh getting them in the mail at some point things are slowed down obviously with the apocalypse so we're trying to find ways to get 3d printed minis to our table so i can paint them so we can have them so we want to thank hero forge go to heroforge.com to create custom miniatures uh with their system and we love them very much and are thankful that they were willing to come on board as a paid product sponsor Nolzer's Marvel's Tutorials was last night. I painted the young red dragon. You can check out all of those tutorials at youtube.com slash realmsmith uh, and youtube.com slash dnd. And we also, more than anything, want to thank Dungeons and Dragons for hosting us on their channel. Uh, we had, like, by far, almost by double, a record uh, viewership tonight before all of our technical issues. So hopefully you've all come back to join us for this incredible momentous occasion. Um, this whole campaign is really close to my heart. I came back to D&D because of Critical Role. It inspired me to play again and it's inspired me to do what we do here. So to have the honor of running a game in this world and having Matt Mercer actually play on our stream on Saturday in our prologue was mind-blowing last weekend uh we had a virtual gary con and we played for 15 hours of all kinds of stuff we did two into the mist seasons as well as a prologue to this campaign uh and it was unreal and such a blessing to have matt lillard and nora and matt mercer and b dave and james hake and luke gygax and all of our guys on uh, it was just unreal so 
We just want to thank all of them for joining us on the weekend. Virtual VeryCon was a great hit, and it was made possible by everybody watching. So we want to thank you guys for supporting that. Uh, finally, we have some merch still from Into the Mist. Uh, we will continue to have that, and we will be adding more uh, merch for Wild Mount in the next coming weeks and months. So keep an ear out for that. To help us in our channel and to help us to do this, you can find it in the bottom of our uh, Twitch panel under the video. And then, of course, if you like what you see, please follow us on uh, twitch.tv slash dnd and twitch.tv slash realmsmith and consider making us your Prime subscription because uh, that doesn't cost you any extra and it helps us do what we do. And I think that's all the announcements, guys. Are you guys ready to jump into a brand new campaign? Let's do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go around the table and you guys are just going to say who you are your player not your character because we'll do character introductions in game uh and if there's anywhere that people can follow you on please share that um as well so uh, let's start with adam hello i am adam mains you can follow me at adam mains on instagram twitter <laughs> Facebook. and i play uh bolt how much information about our, our characters are we supposed just to just name is fine just name okay and I then we'll bolt. do in, in game intros He's right there. <laughs> he is right there. That's true. David. <laughs> I'm David, and uh, you can follow me on realmsmith underscore David. No, it's realmscore, realmsmith underscore Dave on Twitter and on Instagram. And I'm playing Bakayao, the turtle wizard. So good. Christina, welcome to the stream for the first time. Hello. Yay. I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> I'm Christina. I uh, host a TV show called Living Local. Um, you can find me at, at, at Christina Larice on Instagram and Twitter. I don't use really Twitter, but um, and I'm playing the character Gaziel, who is a halfling, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Be I'm so a new, so we're figuring it out. <laughs> yes, this is Christina's first time ever playing D&D, period. The only dice she's ever rolled uh, that apply to D&D was just to create her character. So this is brand new, noob experience, and we're so excited to have her with us. Joel. Yes, uh, my name is Joel OJ, and I am playing um, Plunkrock. That's my character's name, Plunkrock. Plunkrock! Brandon. Hi, I'm Brandon Perkins. Uh, you can find me on, on the Twitters and other places as uh, at DM underscore Brando. Uh, and I'm going to be playing Snow. And Melanie. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Hi, guys. I'm Melanie, and I am on Instagram, um, realmsmith underscore Melanie. And I am playing Isla. She is a Air Genasi Druid. Wish me luck. <laughs> Good luck. Oh. Sorry, Jay, you muted yourself. We cannot hear I you. did. <laughs> I first of all want to thank Joel for the creating that in incredible introduction. Um, he uh, created all of that music from scratch. Um, and as well as put together the whole video. So we want to thank him for his incredible talent as well. We love that, uh, that we have so much talent around the table. Um, we will take questions in the break. So if you have a question about Realm Smith, uh, we'll take a short break in about an hour and a half, so about 10.30, uh, maybe an hour, depending on how late we want to go. Uh, and then um, we can have a pee break and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll come back into the game. Are you guys ready for oh, yeah. some Wild Mount goodness yes sir all right yes let us begin the year is 835 post divergence and it is the eve of zenith on the 26th day of undalar marking the dawn of summer a holiday celebrated with games displays of magic and black powder fireworks to find yourselves along the shores of, Viz of the Vizdali Peninsula on the Menagerie Coast, a lush, rain-swept tropical region filled with scattered forests and jungles. Rocky seaside cliffs and beaches, overgrown islands, and bustling trade routes that span the western coastline of the continent of Wildmount in the world of Exandria. A cool breeze drifts across Flora Isle, mingling the sweet scents of flowers with the salty tang of the Lucidian Ocean. 
well-tanned locals play on the beach while sunburned visitors sit in wicker chairs and sip cold drinks. A half dozen nearly naked shark hunters preparing to compete in the annual tournament stand in the shallows on the south shore armed with harpoons and their wits. Now, I'm going to do what I typically do at the beginning of a campaign, which is uh, describe each character's kind of introduction into the world uh, and give you guys a little bit of a, t of a, t a chance to kind of role play on your own to kind of introduce yourselves and, and integrate. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to ask everyone but Brandon and Joel to mute your audio um, so oh. that you can't hear what happens. And then when I rave my hands like this, you guys can come back. Uh, or maybe somebody else will. Or actually, Josh will post in the chat that, that whoever needs to come in, okay? So watch the chat. Everyone but Brandon and Joel, uh, mute your audio, and we're going to do some intros, and then we'll tell you guys when to come in. So you can take your earphones off. Josh will write in the chat in Zoom for uh, when you guys are ready to come back, all right? Cool. <laughs> Joel and Brandon. Uh, Brandon and Joel joined us for uh, our prologue on Saturday with all of those fun people, uh, and they were upon the wave chaser. After a perilous encounter at sea, narrowly escaping the clutches of an evil oblex, the wave chaser and its crew approach the island of Palma Flora. As the ship slows into port, the crew scrambles to dock the caravel as they have done countless times before. With the sails furled and the ship securely docked, the day is yours as you contemplate a full day of much needed shore leave. What do you guys do? So we're together. Yes. Obviously we're, we're yeah. getting off you the guys ship are, together. Yeah, you guys are in the, just came off the wave chaser. And Julian, we can do the switch to the camera there. So I guess I've been training uh, up to this point, right? Yes, you have been uh, for a little while. Um, Zilna is still on the ship, and she is uh, disembarking with you. You know okay. that this was kind of her final uh, destination. Yeah. Um, but uh, but you have been training for the last, you know, couple uh, days. Okay. All right. Um, so she is with myself and Plunk Rock. She. You guys are all kind of on the deck together. Yes. Okay. All right. What do you do? <laughs> That's a good question. I have always loved the smell of palma flora. I've always loved the smell of palma flora. You know, uh, there was a time when we first met when I told you that uh, you're a little annoying and I want to apologize for that. But um, that, what you just did, that was annoying do you do that a lot a lot all right i suppose as long as we're going to be together i should get used to it Zilna, what do you plan to do now that you are here well i this is my final destination i plan to spend as much time as i can here and um take a bit of a load off i Hope I have taught you as much as I needed to teach you in the time that we have spent together, and hopefully you will keep our agreement. Well, yes, as long as your teachings live up to their promise, then our agreement shall remain. Of course. Our shall we proceed? Yeah, so yeah, as you guys walk to the edge of the dock... Uh, that is Snow and Plunk Rock there. Uh, Josh is helping us with minis at the table today. Um, as you make your way to the end of the dock, you see that there are a number of people on the beach. Um, and you see that there is a building kind of mid-beach, um, which has a sign emblazoned on the side of it, which is called the um, Tide, so the Rip Tide Inn and Tavern. Um, you see that there are people out on what looks like an open air patio. Some of them are sipping drinks. Others are kind of lounging about. You also see that there are a number of uh, shark hunters in the water on the shore uh, that have look like they're actually kind of practicing and tuning their harpoons, tying up a, a rope to them and, and just kind of testing the, the knots on their harpoons. 
Um, you see that there is a dark-skinned, uh, muscled, glistening gentleman over on the rocks to the kind of uh, west side of the beach. And it appears that he is teaching some sort of like, you imagine it would be the equivalent of some sort of Zumba class or like a boxer size class on the shore. Uh, and there, all, all these kind of like, there's a couple elderly people kind of doing it with him. And you can see that he's doing all these like really strong movements and they're kind of all, all joining him. Um, and then to the docks, you see that there's a couple of boats docked as well yeah. along the rest of the docks along the coast. And Palma Floor obviously goes further mm -hmm. back and you can see that there's some wooded areas and some jungle out behind this building um, mm. out in front kind of as you arrive. All right, so what, what does it sound like? Exactly what you hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, there are steel drums somewhere in the background. Somebody's playing a, a lute. It sounds like some sort of band playing. Okay. Um, so I'm going to annoyingly, because I'm, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not super small, but I'm small enough. I'm going to just stick really tightly, closely to snow, like in comfort uncomfortably close to his side as he's walking okay. Okay. where do you head to for snow um well i've been here before yes uh, a number of times uh yes you have you're familiar okay. with palma floor so i have an idea of the layout already to be able to find my way around right yeah okay so he's kind of cuddling up close and i'll just brush right through you know just kind of like walk right past uh, okay. to the point where we're not uh, touching anymore. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, I suppose, find a place to sit and uh, in the sun and yeah. enjoy a drink or two. Okay. So you guys start to come across the dock and you come down the little ramp that appears at the end of the dock there as you approach the Riptide Inn. Okay. okay. So, so uh, Jay, wait, I'll... Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll, say, go can ahead. I try... Can I try to identify a table that's free that doesn't have anyone else? Yeah. Uh, and kind of, I, I I look over to you, Snow, and I'm like, and I go over to an empty table and invite you to sit with me. Okay. So you guys start to move towards the Riptide, but we're gonna we're gonna cut there and go to somebody else. Sure. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, I'd like you guys two to mute, and then we're gonna bring Bolt in. This is a lot different when I have to ask people just to leave the room instead of having them kind of come in and out. But Adam, you in? Yes. All right. You have been in Palma Flora for several days now, preparing for the Zenith holiday, a festival that marks the beginning of summer. More importantly, you've been perfecting your new harpoon launcher that you plan to test in the shark hunting tournament that is set to start tomorrow at noon. You've rented a room at the Riptide Inn and Tavern, which is currently also doubling as a workshop for <clears> your inventions. Uh, you currently kind of stand on the beach and you're kind of watching. To your right is uh, a dark gentleman uh, up on a rock and he's teaching some sort of boxer size or Zumba class. Uh, and there's some elderly people and some kids kind of joining him. And he's kind of rippling muscled and, and glistening in the sun. Uh, you also see that there's an open patio and there's a number of kind of, as I mentioned before, uh, sunburnt folks kind of hanging out at different uh, tables. And then there's a bunch of hunters that are kind of affixing their harpoons and tying ropes to them. Uh, you've gotten to know a couple of them over the last few days, but you've more or less kept to yourself, kind of focusing on your inventions and the things that you that you are doing. Okay. I'm uh, you also see, sorry, during the time yeah. that you've been here, you've also seen a large ship, uh, much larger than any of the other ships that are in dock, kind of pull in. Uh, they moor to the side, and they're starting to uh, disembark from the ship. Uh, and at the front of the pack, you see a uh, very pale elf um, that you have come to know is a pallid elf, which are uh, fairly common in uh, in Wildmount, as well as a little uh, kind of three-foot uh, crow-type creature, uh, humanoid, alongside a tabaxi that is white with spots. And there are a number of crew members that are also disembarking some bags and some packs from the rest of the ship as well. Okay. What do you do? I'm gonna make my way over to the hunters, the yep. shark hunters. Yep. And okay. uh, I'll just go up to uh, the closest one. Yep. And I'll say, um, hello. 
<clears throat> he says, well, hello. Uh, yes, I've, <clears throat> I've finally perfected it now. Um, would you like a demonstration? And this is, uh, you've come to know him as João, um, who is a male tiefling. Um, and he seems pretty uh, set on winning the competition. He's got this reddish skin and these black horns that kind of come halfway to his head and then curl back around. And he says, uh, but of course, if you want to show me, sure. Mm. Yes, I need to borrow your harpoon first. Um, can I see that? But uh, what will you do with this harpoon? I can't, uh, I, I, I need to know that it is going to be safe. That, um, oh, yes, I guess that, that would, I'm going to play the retrieval. Uh, all right, um, let me, here. Yeah, I'm going to tie my rope onto the, close to the tip of the harpoon. Okay, right harpoon? Now, now this, this will help. Uh, can I a, see it? Yeah, give me a persuasion check. Okay. Persuasion. 18. Ah, with an 18, uh, he absolutely says, well, if you say so, of course. Mm, yes, uh, very good. Um, yeah, I'm going to tie the rope. And I have with me a little device that will launch it. Yeah. And um, so for that, I'm going to cast Catapult. Okay. And and start to crank it back. <clears throat> Just yeah. a little elbow grease in there. And then he, he starts to kind of stand back a little bit. He eases back a little away from you as he sees kind of what you're doing. No, don't worry, this is perfectly safe. I've tested it with grapefruit. <clears throat> Let me see. And count down from three, if you please. Tres, dos, uno. What? Three, two, one. <clears throat> yes, click. And I'm gonna fire it into the water. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have to do any sort of check, I guess, for catapult? How does catapult work? Um, I guess, how much does the harpoon weigh? That's a great question. I'm going to say about uh, seven pounds. Oh, okay. Okay, it only works with an object weighing one to five pounds. I'm going to say it's five pounds. Okay. Because <laughs> I just made up seven. I don't know how much a harpoon weighs. <laughs> Um, so it'll fly in a straight line up to 90 feet. Okay. It goes and it starts to unravel the rope. Um, and this rope is only 50 feet. So it goes straight out and then ping! where's the rope tied to currently? The other end of the rope? Yes. I did not tie it to anything. <laughs> and it goes and it flies and the rope follows. And Juan puts his hands up like, what the heck? That is my harpoon. You said it would be safe. I said it would work. Now look how far it went. Do you think you'd be able to hit your target from this far out? Well, no, but now I need a harpoon. Well, I... well you, could, you could still maybe get it, right? It's, uh, you I mean, it's only it water. Thank you very much. You that just... is my only harpoon. I, I can well, buy another I... one. Well, surely not. Uh, well, uh, you just get it. You're the one. You're the water person, Fisher. Uh, um, no, I, uh, you, I expect that you will replace my harpoon for me. Thank you. I, In the <clears> next <throat> few days. I, I, all right, fine. Thank you. I, Thank you. Uh, the competition starts tomorrow. I need it tomorrow. Yeah. And he, he turns around and he kind of walks down the beach with his head down. <laughs> and the rest of the hunters kind of look over and they start to snicker. <laughs> and they're like pretty impressed. Like a couple of them do this. There's one female in, in particular um, who uh, seems like she yeah, she seems human, except she has slightly pointed ears um, and, and very slender, kind of rough around the edges. And she says, she looks at you and she says, very nice. <clears throat> uh, uh, th uh, thank you. Uh, um, um, may I ask for your help if it's not too much trouble? Uh, are you going to help him like you, like help me like you helped him? Ah, uh, no, no. I, my help for him was very, um, uh, economic. This is just a quick, 
uh, task. I, I need you to swim out and grab that rope that's sort of in the water floating over there. That is where we're going to hold on for a second. Let us go to, uh, you're going to now mute Bolt. Okay. And we're going to go to Dave. Mute. Just wait for Dave to come back. Dave, you there? Dave, you there? Hello. Oh, I'm, I'm Dave. here. It's Dave now. One sec. Um, Everybody else mute. Muted. Oh, so exciting. Okay. Unmuted. Dave, welcome back, buddy. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. All right. Rest, relaxation, and a mate. That is what has brought you back to the Menagerie Coast. Though it is all still fairly new to you. You left when you were but a hatchling and have spent months returning. Finally, you are here and through it all, sorry, though it is all new, the sand on your feet, the wind on your shell, and the sweet smell of the Lucidian Ocean just feels like home. You were told Palmaflora was a renowned vacation spot and have come to see what all the fuss is about, though you don't see the need to rent a room when you carry one that has served you just fine on your back. You've been people watching all morning, uh, and one individual in particular has stood out to you. Just to your right, perhaps uh, 10 or so feet away, is a small humanoid, just over three feet tall, bright blue aqua hair, and a sun emblem that she has emblazoned over her right eye. Uh, other than that, a large ship um, with wave chaser across the side has just docked and is starting to disembark. Uh, at the front of the pack of the of the people who disembarking is what you you you've don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's a small humanoid, three foot kind of crow like creature. Uh, right beside it is a you know five to six foot uh, feline cat like creature. Both humanoids they're walking down kind of the gangplank across down from the dock, uh, just past uh, the the docking area or the or the or the, the coast there. Um, there is an open air uh, patio. People are enjoying themselves on it. Some are drinking. Some are just kind of hanging out. Um, and then to the right of you, just to the right, there is a loud, uh, big, muscled, uh, sweating, dark-skinned gentleman. And he's teaching some sort of like boxer size Zumba class um, to a bunch of elderly folk and some children who are who are kind of the only ones that are really paying attention. Um, somewhere on the island, you hear a band playing uh, in the distance, um, and you have been here uh, for just a short time. What do you do? Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to use my... Uh, sorry, my um, Find Familiar. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'd like to, to call my, my orange cat. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, you sure can. Uh, okay. For the sake of those at home, can you just tell me what Find Familiar does and how it's cast? Okay. Uh, so it lasts for an hour. Yeah. Um, you need some charcoal, some incense, some herbs that are consumed by a fire. Hmm. Maybe yeah. I can't do this right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I might so not be able to do that. You start to yeah. you start to think about it. And you realize, oh wait a second, I left my components in uh, in the woods. You you found this kind of area uh, on the northern shore of the island where the bridge okay. connects to uh, the rest of the village, um, and that's kind yeah. of where you've kept your your stuff. Okay, I'd like to approach the big cat. Okay, so as you start to kind of walk towards the dock, you hear a and and you see this this harpoon shoot out from some sort of contraption that a uh, bronze colored dragon skinned fellow uh, launches out into the ocean and you see the harpoon launch and the rope kind of goes but it's not attached to anything and the rope follows it and it shoots like 90 feet out into the ocean um, at which point uh, the guy that's with him raises his hands up in the air and you hear something like that's my only harpoon and he kind of turns around and he goes off off the side of the beach. Uh, and you're pretty close to where they are right now as you start to kind of walk towards the towards the cat-like person. 90 feet out? Yes. Whew. Uh, okay. 
I can I can hold my breath for an hour. Is that enough time to get the harpoon back for him if he wanted me to? Yeah, you sure can. Okay. Now these these are shark infested waters uh, because of the shark hunting, but you can absolutely try. <laughs> Nothing like dying on the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> but you have uh, to go. You, you you know that you have to go a fair a fair distance to get to shark waters. So okay. you imagine that that's you know ninety feet is is closer than that kind of hunt. Okay. Uh, I'll. Uh, can I? I'd like to. Uh, I'm still going to approach the cat first. Okay. So as you approach, you kind of meet them halfway, uh, have them coming down the, the, the ramp um, there. Yeah. Um, and if you can have Joel and Brandon come back. This is so fun. Sirenscape, 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 Sirenscape. This is my hold music. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Siren on the flute. Yeah. All right. Brandon, Joel, you guys back? Hello? Yes. Brandon, you back? Yep. Okay. As you guys are coming down the ramp, you hear this <laughs> and this harpoon flies over the water and shoots out 90 feet into the deep. And a rope that you imagine was supposed to be tied to something follows this harpoon as it unravels. And there is a bronze skin, uh, bronze dragon skinned humanoid standing on the beach, um, out right at the at the shoreline there that you can see. Uh, and hmm. it flies out into into the ocean. The guy beside him, who is kind of this deep uh, red tiefling character with horns that kind of reach back and curl back around, looks at him kind of angrily. Uh, and, and raises his hands and then turns around and stomps off along the beach. Um, as you kind of turn back towards the inn, uh, you see that there is a large turtle type character. Um, they're fairly common on the Menagerie Coast and you've heard of them as turtles, actually. Um, can I get nature checks for you guys to see if you've ever met one? I, I wouldn't see any of this anyway. You know, you wouldn't. I would have heard the whooshing sound of the thing, yes. and that's it. Yeah, you hear the whooshing sound. Uh, give me a perception check, uh, Bren. I have to get used to that. The, the fact that your tabaxi is blind. <laughs> um, 19. 19. It was a, the 19, it was a, yeah. it was a perception check, Jay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 16 for me. Okay. With a 19, uh, Brandon, you hear the sound of the harpoon go. Uh, you hear the kind of the shouts. That was my last harpoon. Um, on the wind, you can smell this fruity kind of fragrance coming from what you imagine is um, an inn or some sort of bar area. Um, and you do notice that the, the wind and the sound kind of disrupts about uh, uh, you know, 30, 40 feet in front of you, uh, insinuating that there is a large building or something there um, to kind of block the sound from the rest of the, of the island. Um, as you turn back towards you, you hear this, these very heavy foot stomps and this grinding sound that sounds like uh, almost like rock on uh, scaly skin. Um, Joel, you see that this is a turtle that is approaching. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to point to uh, to Snow. Yeah. I'm going to cast message okay. into his brain. Yeah. And and say. Uh, Yes. After this, meet me, meet me at the at the bar in the in the in the lobby. Who is this? Ah, yes, of course. Sorry. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a uh, plunk rock. We met on the boat. I'm the small bird-like man. Uh, you've seen. This is my way of communicating without having to use my real voice. Of course, uh, I understand why you would resort to this. Of course we will speak. No worries. Great. I will I will wait for you at the table. Yes. Uh, would you like me to go ahead or are you going ahead? Uh, I, I I didn't know if you wanted to go see that man over there who just harpooned into the ocean uh, and that giant tortoise type thing over there. I I will certainly meet you uh, at the table. Uh, all right. Uh, I will meet you there. Can you um just T tug on on my clothing in the direction of where these beings are, oh, so that right. I know. 
How long does uh, how long does message last, one, Joel? Just for one, those at home. One, um, it lasts for it's like actually, twelve words or something. Isn't it twenty five <laughs> words? Uh, no, it's no, it's one round. Oh, run round. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So yeah. So I'll uh, I'll tug on him and I'll take him over yeah. to the thing. Okay. okay. You tugged on him. Okay. Uh, and as you kind of approach, uh, David, you see you kind of look at each other, and they're not no words are being spoken, but they're kind of nodding in agreement, as if they're having a conversation without lips moving. Okay. Uh, I, I'm going to approach and uh, speak to the cat and, and I'll say, hello, where are we? Oh, um, a pleasure to meet you. I, you are in Palma Flora. And where is that? Check. Buckle down. Six. A six. It doesn't take much to realize that he probably can't see. He's blind. Even with the six. You seem yeah, kind of like looking I, past you. Yeah. And his you, eyes you, are you, this milky kind of glossed over white. You would see that my, my face is pointing generally in your direction. But um, I'm, I'm kind of, my eyes kind of just are gazing at nothing, essentially. Uh, I would still assume you, you would have a better understanding of where we are than I do. So, um, uh, uh, I'll ask, are you from around here? I am not. However, this is one of my favorite stops. There are wonderful drinks in the tavern just down the way. Would you like to join me? Certainly. I, I am quite thirsty. I could follow you or you could follow me. I know the way. I can count these steps. I've been here many times before. Um, yeah, I will guide the way. Do not worry. Okay. We will we'll walk towards wherever he's taken me. Okay. What was this ruckus with a uh, harpoon? Well, uh, a bronze dragon-skinned human launched a harpoon into the water and another man seemed to be rather unhappy about losing his last harpoon. Well, that explains everything I heard then. I, I suppose we shall continue forward. I was going to offer to help them, but it, the, 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 the red tiefling, did he walk off? Yeah, he's, he's like halfway across the beach now. Oh, I will okay. wait if you wish to speak with um, this individual. I can meet you at the tavern, if you like. That and, would be and Dave, nice. and Dave, all you see is this small bird-like creature tugging on his on his arm, like his arm sleeve, like pulling him towards the tavern. <laughs> okay. Um, thank thank you for your help. Uh, what is your name? They call me Snow. And yours? I'm Bacalhau. 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 Very interesting name. Where are you from? I was born on the Menagerie Coast. Ah, the Menagerie Coast. But I was taken when I was young. Bacalhau is the name that I was given. Very interesting. Taken. Can you give me a history check? Sure. Five. Uh, with a five, uh, you've heard the name Bacalhau somewhere, but you can't quite remember where. Your name, it is familiar to me. Uh, do you travel these parts often? I'm not quite sure where I am. I, I see. don't know if I've been here before. I'm trying to find my home. I see. Um, Jason, is there... I mean, like, I've traveled around these parts a little bit. It, it, what could I tell him to kind of give him some idea of where he is other than just the name Pomoflora? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, from what you know, is that Palmaflora is a little island just south of the village of Palmaflora. So the whole thing is Palmaflora. This is just kind of the resort off the coast, off the south coast of this village. Yeah. Uh, in the peninsula is this little island. Um, and you're kind of midway up the Menagerie Coast, more or less, um, north of uh, Port Zune, uh, some ways. Are you familiar with Port Zune? No. Interesting. Well, perhaps some further discussion in the tavern will help to clarify where we are. If you don't recognize the name Palmaflora, I may not be able to explain it very well to you. You see, I, I've never seen it on a map to be able to describe it to you. Well, I, I will join you. And what is, what is your name? I'll say to the bird. A crack. <laughs> uh, uh, your, your crack? Plunk rock. Pl plunk oh. rock. Oh, nice to meet you, plunk rock. Hey, we're nice gonna leave to it meet there. you. No, oh, um, All right, we're going to bring um, Christina in. I'm going to let Mel work out a little bit longer there. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. <laughs> there. Hi, Christina. Is it me? Yes, it is you. You're in. <gasps> <it. Okay. laughs> I know this takes a little while. I apologize. That's okay. Um, I'm ready. Led, led by your unquenchable wanderlust, you find yourself in the quaint resort village of Palma Flora. After much travel, you've decided to take a load off and look forward to the Festival of Zenith a yearly celebration filled with fireworks, games, and displays of magic. All is peaceful and serene as you sit on the beach sipping a fruity beverage. When you spot an odd creature with a massive shell on his back, staring quite obviously in your direction. Um, as you kind of look back at him and you kind of notice that he's staring at you, um, you hear this loud <laughs> as a bronze uh, dragon skinned creature has shot a harpoon into the ocean and it flies and there's a rope attached to it but it continues to unfurl and eventually flies off and you imagine that this rope is probably supposed to be tied off to something but it isn't um the gentleman that's with him is a red skinned uh what you know to be a tiefling and he's got horns that kind of cross his back and come back around um and he looks at him he gets kind of angry uh, you hear something about a last harpoon he turns around and he storms off that way uh by the time you look back at this creature uh, that was kind of staring at you, uh, he is kind of crossed the beach in front of you, and he's approaching two other creatures. One is a small humanoid uh, that looks like a crow with a big, long beak and black feathers covering his body. And the other one is a taller, cat-like creature that is white-furred with black spots. Um, and they meet, and they start to talk. The other thing that you notice is that there is a... Uh, kind of ripped, dark-skinned gentleman to your right, teaching a bunch of seniors and some kids what you imagine to be like a Zumba or boxer size class on the side of the beach. And then right behind you is what you know to be the Riptide Inn, which is where they serve the Palma Flora drink, which is which has been made famous by the resort. Um, and um, and it is kind of an open-air patio where people are kind of milling about. What do you do? What do I do is the question. I join Zumba class. You join the, the class? <laughs> you stand up and you start to kind of, you brush yourself off and you kind of limber up. You start to stretch and you go over. Uh, and there is this gentleman who you have known, his name is Delroy. Uh, and Delroy is this, again, ripped, very charismatic gentleman. He's, go on now, one more time, 10 more. Come on, two more. All right, three more. All right, let's go. And then he's doing like these motions and everyone else is kind of following around. I'd like you to make a performance check to tell me uh, how well you are following in uh, the class currently. All right. 
What does a performance check require? So just roll a d20 and then add the number, the plus, uh, the modifier beside performance in your skills. In my skills. Okay. Kind of, yeah. So I rolled, oh, that's not even the right dice. I rolled the 20. Natural 20? A natural 20. <laughs> oh, natural 20. That's the first of the stream. That is an, uh, a, not necessarily an instant success, but the best you could possibly roll. Um, you've done this class a couple times already since you've been here. You know it like the back of your hand. In fact, you could probably be teaching it. And you kind of catch his eye as you're doing it. And he goes, Guangal, that's right, one more time. And he's like really into it. And he obviously is like even more so in desiring to continue to, to, to teach this class. Uh, let's bring, uh, oh, she's gone. <laughs> I think she's given up. Maybe she's gone to bed. Uh, if you could just send Mel a, a, a message um, when uh, she's back. <laughs> but we will go back to, um, let's go back to Bolt. Bolt. There she is. Oh, there you are. Jeez. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we've been waiting for you mel yeah we've been waiting for you <laughs> okay okay i'm All here right. i'm ready okay, okay. Yep. she's ready uh, i don't know what you're wearing but i got bored uh clearly the apocalypse has been good to you um yeah. all right so as you are uh the merchant ship that you've been serving on the last few months sunk several days ago off the coast of the Twinward Isles after coming in contact with revelry pirates. Instinctively, you called upon your ability to levitate and watched your ship, its crew, and the only friends you had sink below into the Zucidian depths. Strong winds drifted you to wreckage nearby, where you rested for hours until a private sailing vessel picked you up and bore you to Palma Flora, where you are now. The ship has since moved on, but the kind captain left you with some much needed essentials. No, now crewless and without direction, you find yourself in paradise, surrounded by vacationers with only the memories of your fallen crew to keep you company. You manage to rent a room at the Riptide Inn and Tavern for the time being, but you are quickly running out of resources. Um, as you kind of sit by the patio, uh, that exists, that's connected to the Riptide Inn. You're sipping a Palma Flora, which is the drink that is known to the locals and is and is made kind of the resort, or has made, been made famous by the resort. It's kind of a fruity uh, mixed drink. Um, while you're kind of sitting there, there's a large ship that pulls in uh, with Wave Chaser emblazoned across the side of it. Uh, you see a number of people disembark. Uh, two of those, one is a short crow-like humanoid creature the other one is a taller cat-like creature with dark spots and white fur. In front of you, just after it docks, you see this uh, bronze, dragon-skinned humanoid launch a harpoon 90 feet out into the ocean. Um, and a, a rope that you imagine was supposed to be tied to something goes with it. And the gentleman he's with, who happens to be this red-skinned tiefling with horns that kind of curl back around, Gets a little angry and he storms off down the side of the beach. At that time, a tortoise-like humanoid with a large shell on his back saunters by you to meet a the, the two creatures that are coming off the boat. Um, and to the right, you see that a uh, what you imagine is a boxer size or Zumba type class is happening over by the rocks. And there is this ripped, dark-skinned gentleman uh, teaching the class, and he's kind of like leading it. And then this little kind of uh, halfling, which you know is a halfling, just over three feet tall, blue aqua hair, jumps into the class, and you know she's been doing this every day since she got here because she is rocking it. Um, give me a perception check, please. Okay, I can do that. Uh... Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not new at this. Hold on for a second. Where is my perception? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I am really, oh, I'm, changed. I, I, you left me for too long and I just lost all of my, okay. 
Oh, oh, it fell on the ground. Does that count? Does it still no, count? No, you have to re-roll it. Okay. Oh, I got 17 plus five. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah. so 22. Yeah. Uh, with a 22, immediately you recognize the short crow-like creature as Plunk Rock. Yeah. He was actually aboard the ship that sunk. You didn't realize that there was any other survivors. And this is the first time you've seen him since the ship went down. You thought you were the only survivor. And he's okay. coming down from the dock from where the ship is. Okay. What do you do? I always feel like these are trick questions. Like nope. I should I should know something. Nope. Nope. I run up to him. I'm like, hey, dude. Okay, so as you see, um, what you folks see is this blue-skinned uh, uh, female character. She's got hair that tends to wisp on its own, um, even when there isn't wind to blow it. Uh, and, and she's got these kind of swirling designs that have a slight glow to them as she runs across the beach, kicking up sand uh, towards uh, the group that is currently talking of Bacalhau, uh, Punk, Plunk Rock, and Snow. And she says, dude, and Plunk Rock, you recognize immediately that this is Isla, uh, the blue-skinned air genasi that was aboard um, your ship, the Sea Breeze, that went down. I, I like... <laughs> First, I choke a little bit. <laughs> then I then I run around her like, ah, 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 ah. and I pull out my uh, I pull out my my loot, and I go uh, and I start playing a song. <laughs> I say, hi! <laughs> what do you I do, Isla? It. I love it. Um, I'm like, hey, what are you doing here? I thought you died. <laughs> I thought you died! <laughs> and you know, play that game? <laughs> you know, Isla, that um, Plunk Rock is a Kenku, yes. and you learned fairly early into your voyage that he basically could only speak through mimicry. So okay. he only... Uh, speaks in voices that he has heard people say before. So right. he actually doesn't have his own voice um, that you've ever heard. Right, right. Okay. But he does remember songs very well, which is why he was able to entertain on the ship that you were on. Right, right, right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember. Isla, you're so beautiful. Isla, you're so beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's how we're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> There's other people around me? Yes. Yeah, so, and uh, okay. to the left is yeah. a uh, humanoid uh, gentleman, you think it's a gentleman, with a big mass of tortoise shell, and he looks like a, a turtle on two legs, um, and a uh, cat-like character who actually appears to be kind of looking past you, uh, obviously blind, uh, white fur with black spots all over him. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, circle around and do this in front of the cat guy just to okay. be sure and okay. then I'm gonna knock on the the shell of the tortoise yeah you like so you carry your house around wherever you go yes why are you knocking on me just checking things over it's not hollow <laughs> okay good to know but I think the cat can't see you. No? But I could feel you waving in front of my face. Oh, he is, he is something else. Oh, he is, he is something else. <laughs> I certainly am. Oh, this is going to be fun. So what are we going to do? What are we doing? What's everybody doing? We're getting drinks. Join us. Yes, 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 yes. I just yes, got yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Deja vu. <laughs> I'm trying to give me time. <laughs> this is only my second, my second campaign. <laughs> I'm, it's going to take me a little while to get off of that. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Okay. Back so to let's, Bolt. Okay. Back to Bolt real quick. So Bolt, uh, you're kind of having a conversation with um, this other uh, female character, uh, Elandra, and uh, behind you, you feel this um, kind of 
movement, you look around and there is a blue skinned uh, uh, humanoid female who kind of runs past behind you to this group of ragtag humanoid creatures that are currently having a conversation. Uh, and she starts to like wave in front of one's face and knocks on a shell. And then the little crow-like character starts to play a little ditty on his on his lute. Um, um, what do you do? Oh, is it off still? Oh, Adam, come back. Adam, come back. Aww. Oh, no. I forgot he was off this whole time. <laughs> All this time. All this time, Sorry, Adam. dude. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were on this whole time. <laughs> you died. <laughs> so what? Where, oh, what this would be so much better if we were all in the same room. <laughs> oh, man. Poor Adam. <laughs> oh, okay, Adam. So let me repeat that. As you're speaking to this Alander character beside you, um, you feel this movement behind you. And you turn around, and this blue-skinned female is running across the beach, kind of kicking sand up. Um, and she kind of dances around with this little crow creature as he starts to play his lute. Um, you also see that they're with this tortoise human-like creature and also a cat-like creature that looks like a snow leopard, kind of with white fur and these black spots all over him. Um, uh, what do you do? <clears throat> that, that was, uh, the, uh, like I was saying, um... Could I possibly get your help? I'm um, <laughs> retrieving. The, uh, see that rope floating over there? I'm I'm Is... not swimming out to get your harpoon. I'm sorry. I know that's wrong. He's my friend, and I, I care about him. I very much so. But I'm sorry. I am not going to get his harpoon. We close oh. by. Can can we hear this conversation? Uh. Uh, how quiet are you trying to be? You're kind of a ways out, actually. Probably not. Not over the Zumba class and the music that's playing. Okay. Well, all right, fine then. <laughs> Did you leave me with no choice? I'm going to pick up my cloak, just the edges, and start walking towards out towards the water. Fully uh, clothed? No, not that one. No. Yeah, because I don't know how deep it is. So I'll just enter and just start walk, walking towards the uh, the rope. You start walking out? Okay. Yeah. So do you see, you guys kind of out of the corner of your eye, see this Dragonborn kind of like hike up his pants uh, in his boots? Are you still, oh, you're not wearing boots, you're a Dragonborn, right? Like, are you right. barefoot? Yeah. Okay. So he hikes up his, his pants and he starts to kind of like wade out into the water, um, fully clothed. Uh, the Zumba class comes to an end, Gaziel. Uh, is it Gaziel or Gaziel? It's Gaziel. Gaziel. Get it right. And, and and he goes, good job, everyone. And he like he, he finishes up and he kind of wipes off his sweat and, and shakes his hair. He takes his dreadlocks out and kind of shakes and they kind of fly in the wind and he puts him back in his ponytail and he says, all right, next class, we're going to be playing tug of war on the beach, you know. And he kind of gets down off the rocks and he walks out to, he's starting to walk towards the ship. And at this point, there's a number of characters who have come off the ship we're kind of passing the group. Uh, it looks like someone like a, uh, a, a aqua skinned elf. There's a kind of a, a, a thicker, stockier uh, dwarven lady with a beard kind of walks back past as well. And the rest of the ship's starting to uh, the disembark. Um, Gaziel, what do you do? I, I want to approach the, uh, the blue looking figure. And yes. I want to tell her to join yes. me on my tug of war team. Okay, so this little half length, kind of just over three foot tall, kind of saunters over to where you are, and she looks at you, Isla, and says, "Hello. <laughs> do you want to join my tug of war team? I absolutely do. Amazing. I need your strength." We're all together here, right? Yeah, you're all now in the same, except so, for Bolt, who is now waist deep, fully clothed in the ocean. So I'll, I'll just hit, I could help you. You'd like to help me? I'm very helpful. You look very I'm, slow. I'm, that's <laughs> actually a myth. All right, I'll race you over there. 
And I like. So where, where, do you where run? Are we... going to tug of war? Yeah. But tug of war is not out yet. So uh, uh, and you see that you see that Delroy has kind of gone into onto okay. the patio and is kind of going through the resort uh, the inn right now. Where shall we race to? I'll race you to that tree. Okay. I'd like to pick up a pinch of dirt and cast Long Strider. Okay. <laughs> All right. And for the sake of everyone at home, what does Long Strider do? Uh, you touch a creature. Yeah. I suppose it could be myself. Yeah. And my uh, speed increases by 10 feet until the end of the, until the, end of the spell in an hour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So where are you guys racing from? So right now there is a stretch of beach, uh, basically from, from docks to rocks. Um, where do you guys want to uh, go from? Uh, docks. We're going docks. We're don't go docks to rocks. Docks, docks, docks to, rocks. to okay, the so rocks and the rocks. You guys back to the off. Doesn't you guys even back matter. up. Yeah. Uh, you guys back up towards the docks currently. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And you start saying like, "Clear the way," and everybody kind of like starts to move back. Everybody, and people are kind move, of please. <laughs> and people start to kind of gather around and watch as uh, these two kind of get ready. You guys start to kind of stretch, limber yeah. up. With my shell. Yeah, yeah, you pop your head in and out of your shell. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. I would Question. like, yes. Uh, so if I'm waist deep now, how yeah. close am I to the rope? Uh, <laughs> if you're waist deep, you're probably like 30 feet in. You have another like 60 feet to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to give up and turn back around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he turns around quite deflated, and you kind of notice that he's kind of sauntering back to the beach <laughs> as he kind of comes back, and he's wet. All right. So, to the race. Here we go. Uh, do your stuff. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before we go. Okay. Are you ready? Oh, okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Turtle man. And I get in my stance and he gets in his little turtle stance. Yeah. Get in yeah. the stance. Do it. Do, do it. I'm do in it. the stance. <laughs> I get it. I, I kind of crouch okay. over. Okay. I'm okay. already hunched a little bit. <laughs> okay. So then I like whoosh and I gust some sand up into his face. Okay. And so then... you cast, you cast gust, gust. Yep. Okay. <sighs> oh. I would like uh, you, David, to make a dexterity saving throw. Please. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a seven. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so at this point, I would say then make a uh, both of you make an athletics check, please. Strength uh, athletics. I, I'm I'm still gonna just take off in the direction yeah. that I think yeah. we're supposed to go. Sure. Strength athletics. Ooh, natural nine. <laughs> 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 you rolled a one? Did you oh, roll yeah. a one? Oh, dear. <laughs> I rolled a one. Okay. One. So you, uh, <laughs> there it is. So you, you gust some sand up and it goes into your, to your eyes, luckily out. Um, okay. And almost naturally, uh, instinctually, you put your head in your shell. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And because of that, you kind of turn to the left in yeah. uh, Isla's path. Yeah, and I just and take Isla off. just smokes you on the shell, and you go tumbling over Bakaliao, knocking you both over, and you guys are just like brr, 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 kind of <laughs> ten feet in front of you, both prone now, lying in the sand before you even get started. I okay. would like to use, um, let's see here, feline agility yep. uh, to double my movement speed to run yes. right past them in the direction that I heard them going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, this this cat-like character just takes off in the right direction and moves how many feet? Sorry, uh, it's double my speed for a, a full turn. And what's your speed? Uh, thirty. Thirty. So sixty. You move sixty. Yeah, thirty. So yeah. I move sixty feet. Yeah. So he just takes off. Yeah. Um, he may have thought that the race included him as well. Uh, but he's clearly yeah. one day. Uh, oh, no, I knew it didn't include oh, okay. me, but I heard okay. them fall and I wanted to oh. show them up. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Or... As the two of us tumble, I'd like to say with my head inside the shell, you're not part of the race. <laughs> <laughs> as your eyes kind of look out from the shell, <laughs> as you're kind yeah. of on your stomach. Yeah. 
Did the yeah. blind cat just win? <laughs> I think he did. Okay. I stand up and I just like yeah. wipe all the sand and pity off myself and my <laughs> ego is just yeah. bruised and I just get yeah. up and I go over and I grab my drink. That's great. At this point, <sighs> Bolt, you are back on the sand. Um and you, you you're seeing these the you saw these figures just tumble over each other and this streak of white spotted fur fly past and kind of race across the beach and is on the other side of the beach. Okay. Oh. Um the uh the turtle man catches my attention. Yeah. <laughs> I so I'm gonna go over to him. Turtle man. <laughs> oh, um uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I haven't seen you here before. Um but may I trouble you for a favor? Would be no trouble at all. You oh, lost your harpoon, wonderful. didn't you? Uh, so say that again. Sorry. You lost your harpoon, didn't you? He, yes. How, how did you know that? I saw it earlier. Uh, I okay. could help you. Ah, uh, yes. You might be able to reach it. You may perhaps be a better swimmer than than me. Mm. I'm uh, not uh, much of a swimmer, but I could walk to get it. Well, whatever, whatever. Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll be right back. Now, I can I can I, I I've cast this this uh, uh, long strider on me. Yeah. I, I, is that going to work in the water? Like, can I? I want to just walk. Well, can I just want to walk it? straight in and keep walking. Yeah. Can you? I read touch the, a creature. Uh... My target's speed increases by ten feet until the end of the spell. Yeah. So you swim just even faster too. I'm not, I'm not really going to swim. I'm just going to kind of walk straight okay. out there. Okay. So he moves faster than any tortoise you've ever seen. Uh, and he kind of just walks straight out like he's obviously used to the water uh, and walks out until he's under the water. I've got hold the breath. So I can hold my breath for an hour. So I'll just, okay. before I go in, yeah. and I'll just walk in. Yeah. Okay, good. You. He basically just walks in until he is gone. Um there David, I'd like you to make an investigation check to try and find this harpoon. Oh. <sighs> it's a six. Okay, with a six, you start to swim out, and the water is crystal blue. Gorgeous, gorgeous kind of, you know, coastal Caribbean water. Uh, and as you're swimming around, there is a lot of coral uh, around this area. So you start to swim. You're not seeing anything just yet. In fact, you're having even a hard time kind of figuring out if the direction that you're moving in is the direction that the harpoon went. But you are seeing beautiful fish swim by um, and schools of them, all different colors, yellows and greens. Okay. That's all for now. Well, what are, what are my options? I can, can I keep looking? Yeah, can you I want exit and go back yeah. in? <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you, you can continue to try in a moment. Okay. Uh, out from the resort area, Delroy walks out. So one now, let's play some tug of war, you know. Get in your teams. And he kind of walks out to the middle of the beach, pulls out this long, thick, thick, thick rope. And he starts kind of calling out to some of the locals. And some people are like, nah, I don't want to play. And some people are actually getting up to play. One now, line up. Line up. I go. I want to go line up. I All right, the blue girl. I want to use my my force of intimidation and convince everybody on the island to join me. <laughs> okay, uh, give me an intimidation check. All right. A three. Okay, <laughs> please tell me how you ask everyone to, to uh, yeah, go ahead. I fall down to my knees and I say, listen up to me because I'm obviously very Amazing. Come and join my tug of war challenge because I need you. I like it. Okay. Um, what did you roll with your? I rolled a three. A three. Um, yeah. You meant to intimidate them, um, but you actually look a lot more sorry than you do intimidating <laughs> at this moment. Uh, and you don't really garner do... any help. I have a plus six on intimidation. I'll oh, make... so you actually got a nine? Yes. Okay. Well, all right. One guy um, at the at the bar kind of gets up. He goes, Oh, 
I'll do it. And he kind of walks over and he saunters over and he can't really walk in a straight line, but he kind of like kind of walks over and, and, and kind of puts his arm on and he's like, I'm on your team. <laughs> so Jay, as this, as this guy is doing this, yeah. I'll like act, I'll act like him and walk behind him and go like, I'm on your team. <laughs> <laughs> he looks to you. Are, are are you is he making fun of me? <laughs> and I immediately stop and just run back behind the turtle. No, no <laughs> okay. behind uh behind snow. Okay. David, I'd like you to make a behind me, I'm in the water. Check. Yeah, I'd like you to make <laughs> no, yeah, investigation was... check. Uh Ooh. it's a ten. Oh. Okay. Uh still nothing. You're still kind of out there swimming around. You're not worried. You can breathe for an hour. You're not in a rush. Yeah. No, no problem. No problem. All right. So uh, he goes, all right, fine. I'll break you into teams. Blue skin girl with a blue haired girl over there on the right, please. Catman over here. You're on the, on the right. Birdman. This is a crazy group of people, you know, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Birdman with the Catman. That should be interesting. And and he looks at both and he says, You over there, are you gonna join us? Shiny pants. Uh, um, uh, me, Wooly, isn't there would that make an odd number for your for your tag of war? Go on, it's okay. I'll be on whatever team is in is, I'll be on the girls team. <clears throat> uh, I get all right. Here we go. <clears throat> I'll go to the boys team <laughs> okay so boys and girls on either side oh <laughs> there we go we're good josh has been drinking some palma flores too um <laughs> all right i would like the boys on one side to make strength checks uh, strength athletics checks please mm. <laughs> and we're gonna add them up Ooh. So uh, I rolled an eight, which I guess means I'm not really trying. <laughs> eight? Maybe. I rolled a four. That's 12. I got a 10. 22 for the boys. Girls, I'd like you to roll. I got a 16 plus a four. Oh. I, got, I got six plus zero. <laughs> 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 okay, That's so still that a six. Yeah. yeah. So Delroy, ra- he takes this big rope and he just wraps it around this like glistening like muscle that it just pulsates. He goes, "Yeah, let's don't worry, we got this." And he he kind of anchors in the back. Um, and and uh, Gaziel, you feel pretty confident. And he says, "One, two, three." And you guys pull, and you basically pull the other group five feet in your direction. I'd like you to move everyone that way. And you guys clearly didn't uh, didn't uh, anticipate the kind of strength that is coming from the group that has just pulled uh, that rope. Uh, can you mark the center point uh, with something? Um, yeah, there you go. There. That's the center point. All right, with the table? Okay. <laughs> Good. All right, that works. Uh, all right, I'd like you all to make uh, strength athletics checks again, please. Boys okay, first. Can I yep. ask a question? Sure. Okay, so my strength. Yeah, strength ath- first yeah. athletics check. Just well, athletics. Okay, okay, because yeah. there's two different, like, yeah, I don't no, understand yeah. what you want from me. Sorry, athletic strength is the attribute, so you'll see yeah. athletics and you'll see strength after it. That's what I mean. It's just an athletics check. Athletics. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. I got so, you. boy, uh, girls first, Eight. actually, this time. Eight. Oh, Delroy got a natural twenty. Oh. Uh, yes, Delroy. I got, I got a sixteen plus a four again. <laughs> oh, that's forty. <laughs> Kill it. What did you get? Kill it. Who no? me? Yeah. Uh, I got an eight. Forty-eight, boys. So Come I on, decided boys. to try slightly better this time. Uh, yeah. I got a twelve. Ooh. Okay. I got a fourteen. Okay. Bolt. Um, I got a three. That is only a 29. Again, you guys get jolted forward as Delroy just wrenches from the back. 
uh, another Step five away. feet and past the line. And Delroy's, that's right, we won, gals. You got the I'm right gonna, person on your team. I'm going to look at and the two here. people in front of me yeah. <laughs> and and say, um, what, what, who, who are you? How come you're not even helping? You're not even pulling at all. I just want to get drinks. Let's go. <laughs> How come you're not even helping? You did nothing at all. What, a, a cat and, and a bird? Do either of you even have thumbs? I do. Look at these. They're opposable in everything. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'll, I'll point at him and I'll cast a message again. Okay. And, and I'll be like, how, how dare you even say that such things about, about me? You don't even know me. And, uh, and I'll walk off. Okay. Uh, and you hear this in your voice. No words were spoken. No mouths moving. Oh, um, uh, sorry? Uh, mm. I'm going to turn my attention back towards the water. <laughs> okay. Bacalhau. Investigation check. I'm looking. I'm looking yeah. around. I still yeah. got some sand in my eyes. Yeah. Oh, a 17, baby. With a 17, you see a glint of metal just ahead of you with a long rope. And the rope now, just the end of it is starting to drift down, which is what gets your attention from this. All right, I'm, I'm going to grab onto <laughs> yeah. that with my little turtly hands. Yeah, you swim down and you grab it with your turtly hands and you start to kind of bring it in. You start to kind of wrap it around your arm underwater. As you yeah. as you kind of head back, uh, and at this distance, actually, uh, I'd like you to give me a perception check, please. Well, that's always a good thing. <laughs> Seven. Okay, you see nothing, uh, <clears throat> and you start to swim backwards with the harpoon. Backwards towards the shore. Yeah, you start to. Okay, so you you, you run. Yeah, so you come out. And you see Bacalhau start to come out of the water with a harpoon around on his back, uh, and you see this bolt as he walks back um, onto the shore. <clears throat> uh, at this, go ahead. You did it. You got it. Did I miss the tug of war? Uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, but that's fine. We 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 lost. Oh, I'm oh. so sorry. No, but no, but you shouldn't be sorry. Thank you so much for getting this. And I'm just gonna run over and and collect yep. it from him. Hand it over. Awesome. At this point, Delroy says, well, I hope you're all back tonight for the festival. We go on to have some games, some gambling games, very good ones, you know, from our kit. And then we're also going to have some fireworks. So come back uh, just after dinner time. And we go on to have a good time on the beach, all right? Fireworks, you say? Yes, of course. Oh, well, that's some of the best in Palma Flora. Sure. Yep. I'm in. Okay. I, maybe. Um, so, maybe not. as I mentioned before, um, uh, Isla, you have a room um, in the inn. Mm -hmm. um, and you can probably afford another night or two if that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you're out of uh, money because all you have is what was given to you by the people who, um, who brought you back. Sure. The sailing ship. It's a silver per night in the inn, guys. Or you may actually you may be able to afford more, but you don't have a lot to, to last. Um, Bacalhau, you don't have a room. Uh, what do you guys do now? We're going to kind of, for the sake of brevity, we're going to move fast through kind of the rest of this day into the evening. What do you guys want to do between now and the rest of the evening? Or, or sorry, up, leading up to kind of supper time. I want to nap. Okay, you head back to your room to nap. Yep. I'm going to untie and return the harpoon. <laughs> okay, Joan says thank you and is surprised uh, and impressed. Mm, yes, and, and you can expect that next time I will certainly use a longer rope. <laughs> yes, of course. Maybe the, uh, the cat promised time. me a drink. So you guys go have a drink? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You meet uh, the uh, who you know to be. You've met him before uh, on your travel snow because you've been here before. Yeah. And Bacalhau, you have also known him over the last little while. His name's Jose, and he is a male Marquesian who owns the Riptide Inn, uh, and he has been serving drinks to you guys, sees you guys, and you guys have a little bit of a, a chat. If you guys want to have a bit of a conversation now, you can. Um, I'll join. I'll join them. Okay. Uh, I. 
I'm or just Ga- Ga- just for to... sorry, just before you do Gaziel, what would you like to do in this time? I would like to take a run around the entire island once or twice. Okay, so you're gonna go on a, on a jog. Yes. Yeah, you're feeling mighty. Mighty. Small but mighty. After and that. And strong. Yeah. And, and the island's strong. big, <laughs> but I can conquer it. It is. It is That's, quite big. Yes. Okay, so you start to go for a run around the around the island. Okay, cool. You guys go ahead. What do you guys want to have a chat about? Well, I, I, I'm 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 going to order a water. Okay. I'll, I'll ask for uh, just just the water and no salt. Okay. So, <clears throat> a cat, a raven, and a turtle walk into a bar, and they have a conversation. What did you want to speak of, Plunk Rock? I'll uh, I'll point to him. This is what's great about cantrips, by the way. I can use them in an unlimited fashion. <laughs> I point to him and I say, uh, "Yes, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm so, so glad that we, we, we've become friends so quickly." And I'll, I'll also point to, um, to Bakalyao and say, I, "I am, I am so, so happy to meet you, my friend. Uh, I, I know you cannot tell who this is, but, uh, but I'm the small." Uh, creature in front of you, uh, and you are now my new anthropomorphic friend. Is he talking into your brain too? I think so. Now, can they respond? Uh, yep. Tell they have one me. response. They they have one response that whispers into my mind. Okay. It's twenty five words. Nope. What's the response? There's, there's around. Okay. Okay. But do I know that? Do I know that I can respond telepathically? Probably not. No, but you can. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll just think. That's really strange. <laughs> cool. I'm, not nec- I'm, just, I'm just thinking that to myself, but I guess you're going to hear that. Yep. If I um, don't speak to you uh, like this, then he doesn't know what I'm saying. And um, it's... You're carrying on two separate conversations at that point. Would you like me to speak like this or speak back to you in my brain, the way you're speaking to me, into my brain? <laughs> Are you talking I'll to point me? to him again and I'll go, you can, you can speak to me how, however you like. However you like. I'm going uh, to I'm speak kind of... aloud so that Bacalio here can understand what I'm that's, speaking to you, yes? That's a good idea. You find that I point my finger a lot when I have to talk to you because my mode of communication is my messages cantrip. Okay, so back I see is that I do not, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm kind of like bobbing my head back and forth in front of uh what what's the cat's name? What, what did you say your name was? Snow. Snow. I'm I'm kind of my head's like I can't tell where he's looking, so I don't know if he's talking to me or the bird. <laughs> like I were you talking to me? <laughs> So I do, I do turn my head in your general direction, though I may not be looking at you when I speak. Yeah, um, and I'll just keep like looking past me, just to make sure you're looking at me and not somebody else. Right. <laughs> What's right. amazing is that there's a voice in your head that you can't determine where it is, but he's not looking at you even when he's talking to you. <laughs> yeah, this is the worst duo to try to converse with. <laughs> Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, well, my friends, I highly recommend the Palma Flora. I understand you You ordered water, pa- uh, Sir Bacaliaro. Yes. What is this Palma Flora? It is a delicious drink. I recommend you order it with extra flora. <laughs> it's right. just more fruity. It's delicious. No. I'll... I'll put my clawy little turtle hand up and, and try to get the Jose's attention, and I'll say, can I get a palma with extra flora, please? But of course you can. And he mixes up the drink, pours it out of a little keg, and gives it to you. I, I, just Enjoy. as a note, I haven't had alcohol before. Yeah. If this is alcoholic, I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, we're, we're about to find out. You take a sip of it. <sighs> yeah. Uh, and, you, and you taste... Um, I would take like a good mouthful, like water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just a, just a, just a. You chug it a little bit. Uh, yeah. And give me a uh, perception check first. <laughs> it's 
17. Okay, with a 17, there's this, uh, you you um, have an acute sense of taste uh, and you taste like mango uh, and possibly some berries, maybe some honey. Uh, and then you also, there's this strong kind of taste that you've never tasted before. And it kind of makes the back of your mouth tingle a little bit. You taste alcohol I, in it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll describe the, the tasting notes to yeah. them. Yeah. Including that the tastes like tingling. That's right. That means it's working. <laughs> hmm. I will finish it. Yeah. Because I'm probably not feeling the effects yet. So okay. I'll just finish it and yeah. ask for another. Yeah, and it's just it's just kinda like in his big tortoise mouth. I'd like you to make a constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Seventeen. A seventeen. With a seventeen, uh you feel good. You're like yeah. You're fine. Yeah. Uh so, Isla, oh. as you're as you're passing through kind of the foyer of the um of the inn, there is a dark skin dark tan skinned gentleman who um who is standing at sitting at a table. And he kind of looks at you and he says, Psst, hey, psst. Hey, Lisa, come here, please. Come here. I have something to talk to you about. Yes, you, blue, blue, blue lady, come here. I've seen you around. Come here. I want to talk to you about something. Yes, you. Uh, you're you're muted. <laughs> I thought you were maybe talking to yourself, but <laughs> sorry, I had a big whole spiel said. Yeah, yeah and now I know. I gotta Go do ahead. it again. Yeah. Psst. Um. Hey. Pretty lady, come here. Okay. So I walk over and I keep my um, my hand on my quarterstaff. Yeah. And I just walk over, but I keep my six foot quarantine distance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and uh, he says, oh, it's okay. I won't buy. It's okay. I work here. It's okay. Okay, I okay. go a couple yes. steps closer. Yes. He says, are you interested in the, in the free gift? I've heard this before. Yes, all you have to do tomorrow morning at uh, about nine bells, you come back, we have a little conversation. I uh, whoosh him, you, you I whoosh him, whoosh uh, him. What, wait, whoosh this, him. What, what do you mean? Whoosh him. This, I you, whoosh you, him. You, you cast gust? Yeah, I don't okay. want to hear his blow okay. me. Okay, you cast gust, and all of a sudden you hear, and the and the 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 papers on his desk fly up, and he gets knocked back against the against the the uh, the wall in that kind of uh, hallway area. Yeah. Okay. This is okay. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just uh, we have these uh, beautiful cottages. Dude, back. I don't want your tiki. You are, okay. I don't want your tiki. All right. Just want to go for a nap. Okay, just go. Thank and you. And he kind of waves you on. You go up for your nap. Uh, Gaziel, I'd like you to make a uh, athletics check, please. Athletics check yes. coming up. I have rolled a two plus a four. Okay, uh, that is a six. Six. Um, the six. tug of war and the palma floors that you've been having all day have not quite had the effect that you wanted. So you uh, actually are, you've made it kind of like a quarter of the way around the island. Um, but you've, you're, you've, you starting to kind of, um, you know what, we're going to move her over just to show you. I want to grab her. Uh, yeah. And you've kind of rounded the corner of the island and you're going up the ramp that kind of leads to the farm area, um, on the island. Um, and you know before that you've smelt, uh, kind of by the cottages in the back island, you kind of go jogging on a daily basis. And you see um, the familiar kind of penned in area of a farmer who lives with a cottage kind of on the island. You're kind of coming around the right side of it as you approach. Yeah. Uh, I decide to get inside of the cottage in a very sneaky, stealthy way. Oh, you're going to sneak inside the cottage. I will. Okay. Um, here, let's bring the camera on here. Uh, so you're coming up the path there to the to the to the farmer's house 
Uh, and you actually see, as you kind of approach the, the fence, I'd like you to give me a perception check, please. All right. I rolled a 19 plus wow. perception plus one. Yes, 20. So a dirty Killing 20. It. So you uh, you get right up to the fence. Immediately you see that to the right, there are a number of chickens in the yard with a, with a pig. Uh, you see that there is a uh, ox and a cow in the pen to the right. And then you also see that the farmer is in the front yard and he's currently kind of raking and clearing some leaves and, and, and weeds. Uh, and then to your right, along the coast, you see a gentleman that's dressed in a red robe and he's got this orange length of hair down his shoulders. And he's kind of looking over the, the ocean uh, off of the cliff there. Um, and it looks like he's kind of uh, doing some sort of motions or you don't know qu quite what he's doing, but uh, with a 20, you imagine he's practicing inc incantations of some sort. <laughs> mm. I decide instead of using my javelin to kill one of the chickens for my dinner, yes. I decide to join the man in his motions, try to copy him. Okay, his... so you, and you just kind of saunter up beside him? Yeah, okay. quietly. I'm just observing, but it, uh, you know, imitating okay. as well. Yep. Okay, um, you, as you kind of walk up, um, he notices that you are coming up behind him and he turns towards you and he says, oh, oh, hello. And I say, hello, you're, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm well. Um, what brings you to this side of the island? I, I'm typically over here because it's serene and, and not a lot of, not a lot of folks come over this way. Well, I was quite tired after running a, quite a long way. Um, yes. But I, I saw you in the distance doing some sort of movement and I, and I was very intrigued and I'm curious. Explain to me what you're doing. And you can tell that he is uh, a teenaged boy, actually. He's probably about 16, 17 years old. Uh, and he says, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing my um, magic. Um, I've been mm. learning some new spells and I've, I'm just practicing. I, I want to ask, um, who is your master? Who teaches you these magic tricks of Give yours? A, uh, persuasion check. Persuasion check. All right. I'm going to roll. Oh, my goodness. I'm killing it. I got a 20. What? You rolled another 20? Natural 20. Hold on. I have to add it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I kid you not. Hold on. What was it? A perception? Yeah. Plus no, one. Pers persuasion, persuasion, oh, persuasion, which is much higher for you. Plus four. Yeah, 24. Um, he wow. says, well, uh, his name is Dresdel. Uh, he lives uh, in Palmaflor, the village, and he's been teaching me since I was a boy. Um, he is who teaches me. Oh, no. Hello. Yes, I'm here. I, I froze quickly, but oh, okay. Um, I would like to ask him to take me to Dresdel himself. Well, Dresdel is um, busy during the day. He does not like to be disturbed. In fact, that's why I'm here. Um, he likes uh, to spend Zenith alone. Uh, lost his wife a number of years ago, and he kind of uh, around this time of year, and so he he just spent some time to himself in his own thoughts i guess mm -hmm. so i come down here to enjoy the festival while he takes his time well i would ask when is he available i i can wait i'm not in a rush i usually go back in a few days in a few days yes ah well let me uh let me come back and visit you a few mm -hmm. days from now after my nice stay at the resort as at the inn okay will I'll you be, be you'll be around Yes, that's okay. correct. Great. That is where we're going to take a break, everyone. Uh, Joel, do you want to answer some questions, perhaps? Uh, if you have a question that you've asked in the stream, or if you want to ask any questions either about the episode or the campaign or Realm Smith in general, write question in caps in the chat now. Uh, we haven't been watching for questions. Julian may have been a little bit, but maybe not tonight. We're short on moderators. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, ask them now. 
and Joel will be um, answering them for you folks. I'll be right back. I will do my absolute best to answer your questions. Am I muted? No, I'm good. I think I'm no, good. You're good. Okay, cool. So yeah, folks, uh, the way we do questions is you uh, capitalize question, colon, and then your question. And that's how we know that they are a question rather than a comment. So um, how do you guys think Christina's doing on her first go at Dungeons and Dragons? Please be Have nice. You <laughs> you roll you rolled two nat 20s in your first ever yeah. session yes Excellent. yeah you guys jason that's... bought me these so <laughs> <laughs> oh that's don't 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 lose them because that's very rare that you roll even one nat 20 in a session is that rare it's rare oh yeah it's rare wow i mean it, ha it happens in a whole game but you've rolled two of the ones that were in this session so i feel yes. amazing um okay question here for us uh is this adventure from the wild mountain book or is it homebrew the answer is it is one of the adventures from um from the book so james hake who was on the prologue session with us is the writer of this adventure so we um yeah brandon and i had the chance to play alongside James and Matt and uh, in their own world, which was which is kind of crazy, but uh, so fun. Yes, it is in the book um, and it is not homebrew. Um, more questions. Question for Snow. Snow, uh, isn't it great that the tavern has a huge restroom right by the water? He's muted. He's muted? No, his mic. Oh, I, I was. So yeah, my mic, okay. my mic, my mic yeah. was muted. I have a habit of doing yeah. that. Um, I yeah, I suppose so. Uh, <laughs> I'm assuming because that's what you do with the cat. You put their water bowl. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I think that's it, is there a cat. risk that the cat will use the beach as a litter box? <laughs> well, it's convenient. Oh, oh, please don't use the beach. I sleep there. <laughs> 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 That's where we birth uh, our children. Yeah, it's so true. It is. Where... Just don't poop in our nursery. You just walk out and I'm kicking up sand. And you're like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. Question. Great quality, guys. What do you use to make the template we see on the screen? Okay. This has been asked like 20 times in the last two weeks. So I'm going to answer it once and for all. We use magic. It's magic and we cast a spell on the screen. You now what happens is actually, um, we have a number of different technologies happening. We are on a Zoom call right now. We have all this, all of us are on a Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Then through the wonder of studio magic, we have another piece of software called Mimo Live that takes the pieces of the Zoom window, splits it up into segments on Mimo, and, uh, and that's how we're using the split. That's where we place the, the different shots of different people. But on top of that is the design that Jason uh, designed for our game for, for this session. Um, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, kind of what we're doing. There's a studio that has the game set for, um, on a table in front of Jay. And then Josh and, and Julian are working there. And we are all in our homes, uh, social distancing and self-isolating for the benefit of humanity. So, uh, so yeah, uh, you talk to the hand, Adam Mains. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, how many classic bar songs do you have prepared to break out at a moment's notice, Joel? I actually do have a quite large repertoire of songs prepared for this particular um, uh, campaign. Uh, I have been practicing one in particular that I'm waiting on the right opportunity to, 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 to bring out as the Kenku folk song. It's the song of the, cre the creation story of the Kenku uh, people. So Kenku feel the love tonight? 
Can <laughs> you feel the love tonight? <laughs> it is where we are. No, it's not that one. <laughs> Although that is now also added to the list. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam Maines. Question. How much did Ricardo Montalban inspire Bradley for Snow? How much did he inspire you, my friend? Uh, I, I guess not as much. Honestly, the voice is more from... Um, if anybody's ever listened to the audiobooks for the Thrawn trilogy, the original Thrawn trilogy... No, uh, no, no. You didn't say just Thrawn, did you? The Thrawn trilogy, the original... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, from Star Wars... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the heir to the heir of the empire, and yeah. Anyway, um, the guy that reads that book is amazing, and he does this uh, Talon card uh, voice, and it's it's a take on that mixed with a little bit of Puss in Boots. Cool, yep. amazing. Um, <laughs> okay, one last question, then we'll go back to the game. I think Jay's ready for us. Um, uh, Christina, how did you get involved in playing D and D? Uh, interested involved in playing D&D. How did you get roped in? How did, How did I get, get roped, roped in? in? <laughs> <laughs> well, Joel approached me because I work with Joel. I He approached me at work and said, How would you feel about playing D&D? And I said, yeah. I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> I knew nothing about D&D other than in Stranger Things, but here I am. Was, so. you were, weren't you like, Hey, doesn't PewDiePie stream as well? Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's just I was the like, same thing. I know it's PewDiePie. The, <laughs> it's the same thing. So that's how I convinced her to to join. Um. <laughs> and then and then this whole quarantine thing happened, and now I'm here in my bedroom. So yeah, exactly. Right. So Joel, uh, yeah. are you are there questions in D and D chat as well? I've been told that there are. I have not been looking at them. Um, I've been only answering so far questions in ours. Do you want me to take some from the other one? Yeah, sure. I okay, have a request, let me do that. Joel. Can you yes, say you oh, yeah, may, you mayhaps? You're not there already. Mayhaps. Yeah, very good. Okay. You know what? Uh, Warped Saint 1 said 100 bits if you say mayhaps. So there you go. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> mayhaps. Julian actually can, from his side, ask uh, some questions. Julian, who is producing for us. Everybody, yay, Julian. Yay. And Josh, our cameraman. Uh, Julian, you have a couple questions? Hello, hello. Yes. Yes, we can. Yep, we just answered that one. Oh, the back, the actual background, the oh, picture that's... backgrounds. Uh, someone else can answer yeah. that one if you want. You David, how about press yeah, command or, comma. Adam. And then there's a background tab that you can adjust. Command comma on yeah. a Mac. On a Mac. It's the preferences no, I'm, window. You can I'm also on click a the up arrow not next very to the stop old video. MacBook Use Air, virtual. and my processor wasn't powerful enough, so I actually needed a green screen in order to do mine. <laughs> but on any computer that's not made out of tinfoil, uh, it, it's probably powerful enough to do it. I, I was yeah. going to say, Dave, your background, the lighting sources match yeah. the lighting on your, your face. face. Yeah, yeah. I worked. Pretty... I did. I also have a, a couple of proper LED lighting panels. When you, when you painted that mural behind you, Dave, like yeah, earlier today. You... <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. That's yeah. what I thought. <laughs> um, any other any other questions, Julian? Okay, sure. The other question is, did anyone's characters know each other before this session? So Plunkrock and Snow knew each other, and it sounds like, um, like who else knew each other? So it sounds like uh, Ayla. Is it uh, is it Ayla? Uh, Melanie, is your character's name Ayla? Yeah. Yes, Isla. Okay. Okay. Isla. Cool. So sounds like Isla and Plunkrock knew each other, but the other players or the other characters don't know each other, as far as we know so far. Correct. Yes. Uh, well, uh, except for well, yeah, Plunkrock and Snow knew each other from the ship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mentioned that. Okay. All right. Let's jump back in, guys, because we have we're gonna go till ten till eleven thirty. So not quite cool. Uh. Uh. Not quite till. Uh. Yeah. 
not quite three hours, but we'll get as much as we can in after the yeah. technical issues that we have. And I just want to thank everyone. We have record numbers tonight watching, and we're so very excited that you guys have joined us for this thank crazy you. romp across the Menagerie mm -hmm. Coast. So, uh, all right. Jumping right back in. Um, you guys have all kind of uh, retired for the afternoon. Some of you taking naps, some of you going for jogs. Um, and the evening comes fairly quickly. You all either eat dinner at the, uh, if anybody is eating dinner at the inn, uh, you guys can take off a uh, silver for dinner. And then uh, if you're eating dinner there, if not, then uh, if you're just having rations, just make sure that you take the rations off your character sheet as well. Cool. With my bad reputation feature, do I have to pay? Uh, if you want to use that as a feature. Because <laughs> um, hey. since I'm a pirate, <laughs> I don't always have to Yeah, pay. but not everybody knows who you are. So if, if you want to reveal, if you want to go down that road, you let me know. I guess it depends on how, whether how much does Jose know. Uh, I'll pay. I'll, <laughs> he doesn't. I'll, I'll pay because okay. Jose doesn't know. No. Hey, so don't tell hey. Jose because Jose yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. Hey, no way, Jose. Um, do you know Jay if um, if Palmaflora is more than ten thousand uh, in population? Uh, yes, I do. One moment, please. Sure. I happen to have that information right here. If Palm of Floor is more than 10,000? Yeah, just just curious. That's <laughs> such a random question. It's not random. I'll tell you why in a sec. Um, I did have that information. Yeah, moment, you can uh, it no, it's right? not. More than 10,000? Yeah. No. Okay. No. Much, much, much less. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um... You guys have your food and you the day passes into uh not into evening quite there's still like three hours of sunlight left um but it's around 7 38 the equivalent of 7 38 p.m uh things have kind of quieted down around the island um the breeze has started to kind of come in and it's a cooler temperature at this time uh, and you find yourselves kind of coming back out to the beach area um, there are uh, lit lanterns that dot kind of the landscape um, and uh, torch light is starting to be lit um, as a band starts to play kind of in the corner a bit more kind of like low key music not quite as, as, as lively as during the day um, and you make your way out onto the patio area and there are a number of, of games set up on some of the tables there uh, dinner has been cleared, and now there are people who are manning these tables. Uh, and there are three different games that exist. Out on the beach, too, you can see that there is a sa the sand is kind of being leveled, and there are some fireworks that are being set up on the beach. What do you guys do? Uh, I would say um, at this point, yeah, you guys are all kind of gathering kind of at the same time, all coming from different directions. I want to be right next to where they're setting up the fireworks, watching... Okay. Intensely. I yeah, I figure that. So you go overbolt, and there is a couple of younger uh, gentlemen. Um, one you can tell is the groundskeeper who ten tends to kind of walk the area. Older crotchety man, and a younger uh, boy who you've seen work the uh, the resort. And um, they are currently sticking these tubes kind of into the sand and covering it with sand. Covering the tubes with sand. And there's only like two or three of these tubes that they have. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, uh, young, young man. Hello. <clears throat> uh, yes. Yes. Um, good, uh, good evening. Um, well, good evening. May I just take <clears throat> just a quick peek at one of those uh, tubes that you have there? If it's not too much trouble. And he kind of reaches down and starts to take one out and the old man kind of slaps his wrist. And he says, no boy. Why? And he looks up. He says, "What do you want with these? Oh, well, they are um, very expensive." Well, no, I, I don't mean to uh, ignite it for any reason. I just want to inspect it and, and maybe get a sense of how it works. Persuasion check. Persuasion twenty-one. Ooh. He says, "Uh, 
Uh, I typically wouldn't, but just just a moment then, because we're about to start fireworks when it gets dark enough. Uh, not naturally, no. I wouldn't want to do anything to interrupt the facilities. This would be quite a spectacle if <clears throat> if if this is exactly what I think it is. Wow, amazing. Uh, yeah, and he gives it to you. All right, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes just looking it over. Yeah, give me an investigation check. Investigation 25. Ooh. Um, it looks like a tube. It's got a little um, wick uh, a f- or a fuse on the bottom of it. Uh, and it looks like it's made of paper uh, and the tube. Um, it's actually kind of like a wooden tube with like a paper top on it, parchment top. And uh, you kind of shake it and you smell the, the smell of black powder. I mean, what you imagine oh. would be. How far am I from him, Jay? Do I see him? Do am, are we in the same vicinity at all? Yeah. So you're kind of at the edge of the of the porch area of the deck, um, and he is out in the middle of the of the of the area there. Okay. Can um. So I'll uh. Julian, can I'll bring up the uh, map there. <laughs> look at him. I'll kind of saunter over towards him, and uh, you know, point at him, and just into his mind, I'll say um. Yes, I, I, I was looking for some nesting material myself. <laughs> could you could you get me some of that? Uh, perhaps the paper and some uh, some of the some of the, the some of the leftovers. Uh, once you've put it off, I, do I know where this voice is coming from? Uh, give me a perception check. Natural one. No, you don't. <laughs> <clears throat> in fa- in fact, you th- you think it was the boy talking to you? What? <laughs> why? Why in the world would you want to build a nest with this? I look over at his dad, just like, uh, uh, what? And he says, uh, "I don't know what you're talking about." And he- I just. I just laugh. I start rolling around on the ground, just laughing, just laughing. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know who's laughing? <laughs> you all, um, again, kind of, you know, are taking notice to the games that are on the deck. Uh, you see the Kenku kind of fall on the ground and laugh. And uh, he's kind of pointing out at Bolt, who's kind of looking around. When this laughter erupts, not qu- a little bit confused about what might be going on. What do the rest of you do? So I've been kind of discreetly nursing my drink, trying to get Bakalio drunk to learn yep. every secret he knows. Okay. Um, just in case there's anything lucrative in his mind. You continue to drink, Bakalio? Yeah, I'll go along with that. Um, yeah. I'm actually, I'm not going to eat anything. My plan is to just try to graze later outside off of some of the plants that I find. Okay, can you uh, give me a constitution saving throw, please? Absolutely. Uh, it's um, a 20. Yeah. Let's keep drinking. With tw- yeah, you're three drinks in. You feel fine. And so yeah. at this how's point, the, you're like... How's you're Snow question- doing? <laughs> yeah, you're questioning tortle, tortle uh, physiology because you've had one drink. He's had three. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not quite sure, you know, how this is happening. I'll, I'll just say it. I'm like, these are great. Will you have another? This one is doing quite fine. Uh, it's, it's working quite well, I assure you. Now, uh, just tell me, um, in your wonderful travels, have you ever heard stories or seen anything that might strike you as being, let's say, expensive? Uh, expensive or let's say opportunities no. have you come across any interesting business opportunities not particularly I've just been walking trying to find my home you've just been walking for how long have you been walking a ten day or two or three or ten I've been walking for a long time. Oh, I imagine that must be very exhausting. Oh no. 
Isla, uh, you have been taking notice of uh, the uh, gentleman uh, at the resort for whatever reason. Um, and uh, you don't see um, the um, gentleman who was teaching the class and doing the tug of war earlier. But you do all of a sudden notice a man that you haven't seen here before yet. Um, he is a dark-skinned uh, gentleman, short jet black hair with a half grin as he kind of walks out onto the deck. Um, he's handsome and svelte uh, with a slight paunch. And uh, you, as he kind of walks, you see a little bit of kind of gray hair starting to pepper his dark, uh, uh, dark hair. Um, and you notice that there's a gold medallion that says something on it kind of hanging from his, from his neck. And he kind of stops and looks over the ocean, takes a deep breath in and lets it out as he kind of looks around at the games. What do you do? I mean, you don't have to do anything with him, but what do you do? Okay, well, he catches my eye and I kind of casually walk out to where he's standing and I just look up at the stars and I just make some casual conversation. What do you say? I say, I say, <laughs> um, oh, I'm getting tired, guys. I'm getting goofy. Um, I just say, hi. I don't even know. I just, hi, I'm Isla. Hello, uh, I am Jared. Uh, it is nice to meet you. Make your acquaintance. How long have you been here? Oh, I just arrived uh, earlier this afternoon. Did you come with your family? No, I am all by myself. <laughs> I retired recently. Uh, <clears throat> used to live in across the ocean and uh, decided to come see what this menagerie coast was all about. And are you liking it? I love it uh, so far. It's beautiful here. Yeah. You're just here for some relaxation? Yes, I am retired. I've been busy uh, the last number of years. It's been a tough go, but uh, now I am just taking my time to take it all in and breathe it all in. And as you kind of get closer, you see that this medallion uh, around his neck actually says J Money on it. And it kind of sparkles in the in the sun, in the in the kind of the the setting sunlight. Okay. Hey, you actually have a necklace like that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's me. Jason. Does, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So now I spot his J, J money. Yeah. Yeah. So I spot his necklace, and I kind of like get the vibe from him right so um i kind of like look behind him yep. and see if his pants are pulled up or if they're like way down on his hips like <laughs> like they wear them nowadays <laughs> um where's his pants because that's no they're, 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 he's actually very smartly dressed okay um, and okay. He, he kind of notices that you've noticed the medallion and he gets a little kind of embarrassed and he kind of tucks it in and pulls it. Like he almost didn't realize that it was out of his shirt and he kind of puts it, tucks it into his shirt. Oh, I didn't think he was wearing a shirt. Yeah, no, he's, he's <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. Um, <laughs> is, is this my story or your story? <laughs> he's he's smartly dressed in like, almost like a, like a, a, a loose fitting uh, flowing pirate, uh, like, poet shirt with like the, the ties that are kind of somewhat undone a little bit of chest hair coming out um, and uh, these tight kind of uh, leathery suede pants with some boots that are kind of knee high almost um, okay. give me a uh, history check please okay um, 7 plus 1 8 um Okay, so you've seen this this type of dress before, and it's actually quite common on the Menagerie Coast. But you can't quite yeah. place exactly where from. All right, so, sorry, what's his name? Jared. Jared, I see the uh, your neck. That is Jared. Jared, 
That's what et. I said. Tutis. Jarrett. Yeah, Jarrett. Jarrett. Yes. Jarrett. Yes. Tell me about that necklace. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's lovely, isn't it? Um, it came from a, a, an old trusted friend of mine. It was a it was a gift. Was he a singer? Yes, actually, a very a very good one. Yes, uh, he was uh, very accomplished, uh, famous. Some would say, <laughs> gnomish fellow. Right. What was yeah. his name? Because I it looks familiar. I think I might have seen him. Give me a persuasion check. Fourteen and fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, with the <laughs> with the fifteen. Um, uh, that information is my own. Let's just leave it at that. Well, you just cut off the conversation. Okay. Where are you from? I, I At this point, go. Gaziel, you kind of stroll up <laughs> and notes. see, and you see uh, uh, Isla kind of, um, you see Isla sort of go red, blushes, um, and uh, she's speaking to this gentleman who's kind of a, t- a tall, kind of good-looking older gentleman, mm. smartly dressed. I uh, interject and say, "Hello, how are you doing?" Because I'm quite intrigued as well. Yep. And I, I ask Isla how they know each other. Well, I just met Jarrett with two T's just now. Mm. He was just telling me about that beautiful necklace that he's wearing. A necklace? You don't say. Mm-hmm. What's on oh, the necklace? This, this thing. Um, yes. Uh, he kind of pulls it out, kind of not embarrassed, but like somebody gave it to him and he wears it to honor them. But, and it's this kind of gold flashy necklace that says J money on it. Ah, very nice. May and I- kind of, you, you look a little closer and in the O there is what appears to be uh, like a gnome kind of face with a hand like this in the middle of the O on the medallion. Wow. Um, why is there a gnome in the middle of your necklace? Oh, uh, that is, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, uh, that is, uh, the, 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 the person who gave it to me, yes. And who would that person be? <laughs> Give me a persuasion check. Okay. <laughs> persuasion check. Fifteen. Okay. Plus. Okay. I, mm, an old friend. I will say Four. that. He was a performer. He was accomplished. Uh, back in Taldore, where I'm from. What kind of performance? Uh, he was, uh, uh, you might call it a bard. A bard? Yes. Interesting. But enough of that. I, I'm here to enjoy myself and not talk about pasts. New life, new things. New life, new things. Well, yes. I'm just very intrigued, so don't mind me. Yes. I'm uh, well, quite a curious from? person. I am, I'm from, um, a, a well, you know, if you're not going to reveal things to me, I'm not going to reveal things to you. But well, there it is. Well, what I will say is that I am a, I am a, of this, you know, I'm a, I'm a person who loves people. That's that's the truth. Yes, well, I can see that. Yes. And you both have blue going on. Are you friends? We are now. Yeah. That's correct. We we kicked some arse at the tug of war. Did you see that? No, I, I arrived after that, I believe. I, I did hear about it, though. Yeah. Embarrassed yep. some boys, did you? Pardon? You embarrassed some boys. <laughs> yes, we did. It's called mm. girl power and strength. That's right. Training. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very I good. I see. I see. Mm-hmm. Bacalhau. And Bolt. Um... <laughs> Let's do buckle you first. So you guys are still drinking at the bar, uh, and people are starting to step up to these tables and they're starting to play. You guys notice that there are three different signs at e- uh, one at each table. Um, the first one uh, says Avandra's favor on it, and you notice it's a dice game. 
The other one says Gambit of Ord, and it looks like it's a card game, and people are just starting to sit around. A couple uh, chairs available still, but three people sit down, and there's a dealer. And then one says uh, Quan at Drunzal, and it is a weird kind of a large kind of tabletop that they put on a table, and it's got kind of like a, um, a maze carved into it and built in onto this table. And there are five little um, cages along the end that have little lizards in them. And uh, the lizards are different colors. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I'll, I'll ask him, uh, are you familiar with any of those? Oh, there's three games. <laughs> Maybe you're familiar with them. There's Avandra's Favor, Gambit of Orbs, and Quan Ad Franzel? <laughs> Do you know these games? I know of them, yes. Avandra's Favor is the only one I have played. And you know these are Marquee, Marquee, uh, famous Marquesian games, Snow. Mm, yes, these are famous in Marquette. I've never played a game before. Well, why don't you give it a try? They are games of chance, so be ready to lose some coin. Oh, no, thank you. You do not like to rake, take the risk. I live simply. I've had a lot taken from me, and I don't wish to lose more. Oh, Would you I... like to play? Well, perhaps I could play some dice. I could take you over. I'm yes. going to call uh, Jose yep. and get one more drink. Okay. He pours, he pours another Palma Flora and pushes it across the bar to you. Yeah. Uh, and I'll take the drink and I'll lead Snow over towards the table to play. Okay. You guys go over to the table and there's an uh, older lady there who seems to be the person who's kind of overseeing it. She's, ah, yes, yeah, step right up. Evandra's favor. Have you played this before? I have, yes. All right. Here are the dice. Roll to... Uh, Roll these, please. And uh, you are going to make a bet. Uh, you want to equal a 7 or a 12. Uh, it's 5 silver buy-in. 5 silver. That is steep, don't you think? Oh, well, no. I, uh, I, that, is, uh, that is cheap, actually. It's, it's typically much more than that. Well, you see, my new friend over here, he has never, never played games of chance before. Uh, I would hate for him to see me lose right off the bat. Perhaps we could try for something a little bit less. Give me a persuasion check. And I'll sure. tell the dealer, I've never played any games. Yes, you sad. Oh, you sad, sad boy. <laughs> My I persuasion suppose. is a nine. Okay. She says, listen, how about five silver between the two of you? Then it's less. And you potentially uh, double your money. What do you say, Bakariel? You've been such a good friend. I suppose I could lend you some money if it means you'll have some fun. <laughs> you know what? I do not like to borrow. Uh, I will just front the money and you enjoy the show, okay? Thank you. Hey, Jay, as he's rolling, I. I if I'm with them, and I believe I am, I just follow Snow around. Um, as he's rolling, I'm going to cast uh, Prestidigitation to make sure okay. the dice show the right side up and a win. So I'll just uh, wave. Can I do that? Yeah, give me give me a, a description of Prestidigitation just to make sure that... Yeah, so uh, this spell is a minor magical trick that novice spellcasters use for practice. You create one of the following magical effects within range. You can create an instantaneous, harmless sensory effect, such as a shower, sparks, a puff of wind, faint musical notes, or add, add odor. You can instantaneously light or snuff out a candle, a torch. You instantly clean or soil an object. You can chill, warm, or flavor up to a foot. You can make a color, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object. That's what I'm doing. That's the one. Walmart for one hour. Okay. Uh, and do you have to roll anything, or does anybody get to get a get a save on that? Uh, there's no save. It's uh, cantrip, and the spell can have. Mul I can cast it multiple times. You have up to three of its non-instantaneous effects uh, at one time if I want. So I can cast it over and over again. 
Okay. Uh, what's the range on it? Ten feet. Uh, ten feet. Okay. So you're getting close enough. Uh, and you cast. When do you cast it? I'm gonna cast it. Um, as as he's rolling it, as they're landing on the, uh, as they kind of set to land in their position, in their final position. Okay, so here's here's what we'll do. Um, I want you to you've casted it. You'll cast it at that time, but yep. to time it so that it shows when it actually lands. I'm gonna need yep. a sleight of hand check to make okay. sure that you kind of time it so it doesn't change yep. after the fact. Sounds uh, fair. cool. And who's rolling the dice? I will Back roll the dice. Oh, They're sorry, six no. That? They're D6s? Yes. All right. So two D6s, right? Yeah, two D6. Oh, I got a 21. All right. All right. One is a one and the other is a four. Okay. You roll it, uh, and it, the kind of roll, and you have a seven. And everybody around the table goes, ah! And everybody kind of cheers. She says, oh, see, beginner's I, luck. I told you it would be good. I, uh, I, ah! Uh, I'm, I'm smiling with my little turtle beak. And she gives <laughs> you your five silver, and she gives you five more silver. Thank you kindly, milady. And, and I just, don't you see, my friend, it is just that easy. That was <laughs> incredible. Shall you, so, shall you try next? And she looks at you, Buckley. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I don't want to lose any money. Okay. Back to J, back to J money. Um... <laughs> yeah, he says, well, uh, uh, may I uh, uh, buy you a, a drink? Uh... Who's he talking to? <laughs> He's talking to Isla and Gaziel. <laughs> Jared has uh, just offered to buy you a drink. I, um, I'm good for the night. I just, I don't know about you buying me a drink. Or what I'll take hers. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Uh, just this way, and he kind of leads you, Isla, to the bar. He orders two Palma Flores because they're the best, and uh, he has one, and he passes one to you. And okay. you guys start. You guys have a little bit of chit chat at the bar. Okay. Bolt, uh, you uh, kind of inspect the firework. You you kind of understand how it works. Black powder fuse, very simple kind of make. You give it back to uh, the groundskeeper, and he starts to put it back in the in the, in the ground at this point. And it's getting yeah. darker outside at this point. And uh, I sit right in the front row. Okay. And I just wait expectantly for the show to begin. Yeah, so you you know, cross-legged, kind of sit down in the sand. Nobody else is sitting there. <laughs> and they kind of wait. And there's a little boy who kind of like runs over and he's kind of cut. He's got like berry juice kind of around his mouth. And he kind of runs over and he looks at you and he, he smiles and you're obviously glistening. And he kind of, he sits down beside you. In the sand and crosses his legs too. Puts his hand in his his hands in his uh, in his lap, and waits. <laughs> Are you uh, looking forward to the festivities tonight as well? Oh, yes, yes, I am. Mm, yes, you you've uh, you've seen this type of display before. <laughs> ah, fireworks! They're my favorite. They're my very, very, very favorite. Uh, but you, I've I've never seen anything you like. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I touch you? Um, I. Oh, um, I guess so. And I just reached my hand, my clawy hand out. And he kind of like, he goes, oh, oh, they're, they're, they're cool. Yes. Like, like, yes. like, like scales, like. Back in with that. Wow. Can we be friends? Um, sure. What's your name? Uh, my, my, my name is Gregory. Gregory. Mm. Yes. What's your name? Uh, my name, uh, you can call me Bolt. Bolt. I like Bolt. That's a now, nice name. Now, Gregory, <clears throat> where are your parents? Oh, I don't know. They drink a lot of Palma Flores. <laughs> <clears throat> my dad's probably sleeping. My mom's, I don't know where. <laughs> All right. I saw her with Delroy earlier. I i don't know. Oh, Delroy. Um, remind me, who, who is this uh, Delroy? Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the, the big guy. Uh, you know, he does the dancing and the classes and... Oh, does he run the... the yes, wars? yeah, Delroy, that's right. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, he's very he's very good at that, isn't he? Yes, yes. Hmm. Uh, well, all right. Um, well, what is your name? I mean, sorry, I asked that already. How old are you, I meant to say? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 11. 11? Yeah, yes. That's, that's pretty young, isn't it? How old are you? 
Me? Um, I am 30. 30? older than 11. You look mm. older than 30. Well, okay. <laughs> it's the scales, you know. We age differently. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. But, um, do you have any idea what time the show is supposed to begin? Oh, I don't know, but probably pretty soon. Uh, um, I can't mm. wait. Excellent. I will wait as well. Mm. All right. Um, all right. Back to uh, Bacalhau. You guys are at the tables. Uh, you guys just won. Uh, there are two other games. Do you guys want to do anything else at this time? Bacalhau, you know, they have wonderful, wonderful fireworks shows. Have you ever seen fireworks before? No. Have you? <laughs> no, neither have I, but they sound amazing. Why don't we go and take a look? Would you uh, join us, Plunk Rock? We could all listen together. Indeed. Okay. You, why don't you watch? I would listen uh, for all three of us. Hey. Okay? Sounds good. So you guys head over to the firework circle kind of thing? Yeah. Okay. As Where we walk, stand? yeah. I, I will ask him, what happened to your eyes, to Snow? Uh, well, um, I was born in this way. They say it was a freak accident in the womb. Uh, my father had always joked that my sister did it before we were born. She just clawed me in the womb or something. You know, we, we were twins. <laughs> that sounds terrible. And that, that reminds you, Snow, that you actually haven't seen three earrings around um, since you docked. Um, you have seen a couple of the crew members, but you haven't seen any of the officers. Um, you imagine they're all kind of just relaxing and tired, and and they don't typically engage in the jovial nature of what goes on here. Um, but you did see Kajori with a young Marquisian woman earlier. At Kajori. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like him. Yeah. Uh, okay, so everybody everybody survived the encounter, right? You yep. didn't lose anyone? Okay, nope. that's good. Um, all right, so I, I guess that's normal, though, right? Would I expect to have seen three earrings? Yeah, yeah, and, seen, and you had but... heard, yeah, and you, well, you had heard also that they were, a lot of them were planning on going into town, into, villi- into the village, which is across a, a large suspension bridge on the north side of town, and that goes into the actual village. This is, this is the resort side. The other side is just where live on the floor. Do I know what her business was in town? Uh, no, uh, you just know that she came to trade the spice, the Fusaka. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, I, while I head out with uh, Bacalio and uh, Plunkarok uh, to catch some fireworks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gaziel, what would you like to do? I would... I, knowing that there's a fireworks show, I would like to uh, go out and also enjoy the fireworks. We, maybe with the men that I did tug of war with earlier. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, Isla, you uh, have a nice conversation with Jarrett. He tells you that um, he actually is, you get the sense that he's former military. Um, and as he starts to drink a bit more, he kind of loosens up a bit. And he tells you that he was the, ca- uh, he's a former captain of the guard uh in 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 the far off land um but before that he came from Ankorel in marquette um and he had to flee but you can't quite get the information of why um out of him he's he's not quite that inebriated yet okay um hey jarrett with two T's. Do you want to go out to the sand and go watch the fireworks? There's like a whole festivity thing happening. Do you want to come and hang out with me a little bit longer and watch the fireworks? Yes, that sounds nice. Okay. And then we just go out into the sand. Yep. All right. You guys go out in the sand. You all gather around and the groundskeeper says, all right, everybody ready? Mm-hmm. This, is the, mm. this is the best yet we've had this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the uh, he kind of says, hey, "Everybody stay back," and he makes sure that the kids are far away. His little uh, kind of help for, helper kind of walks off, um, and he takes out flint and steel and sets the fuse and goes 
in the air and like this little like very little very low everybody kind of squints to see it and he goes he goes wow amazing isn't it i'm blown away yeah i've never seen that before <laughs> I, and i describe it in the utmost detail to snow beside me this little Thank okay. you, my friend. I'm always grateful for such wonderful descriptions. That was incredible. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, um, in the middle of a show here. Do you mind? He, yes, he we set, are he show. Lights yes. The next, yes. He next, lights the next fuse. Psst. Psst. <laughs> okay. Now, we were <laughs> promised some real entertainment. Fireworks display. It just looks like you've broken a lighter. I'm sorry. Are you, are you not entertained? <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid. Now, <clears throat> now, you need to do something um, some, something more like this. And I'm, uh, I'm going to cast uh, Create Bonfire <laughs> just in the, in the front, in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and um, just from using like a little device that I have that kind of sh- causes it to shoot out. And I yep. smack, smack it on the ground, and the bonfire <laughs> shows so up. You walk right over, there. and you have a device, and you, it's kind of like almost like a boomstick, I guess, or something, right? And yeah. you kind of hit it on the ground. And <laughs> when this large bonfire erupts in front of you guys, uh, we actually have a bonfire. We put that aside just in case you could hey. use your could create a bonfire spell. <laughs> and it came, <laughs> and everybody goes, ah. And Bill, the groundskeeper, kind of goes, Thanks a lot. And the mm. last fire firework that's in it goes <laughs> inside the bonfire <laughs> and basically just sparks up the side. <laughs> it's all right, show's over, and he kind of turns around. I I stand and I clap. <laughs> I'm blown away. That was no that was that? <laughs> that's great. That's good. Again, describing everything to snow of the fire and the the little fizzle at the end. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. Yeah, Who I did that? To the boy next to me. <clears throat> and you see, that's that's what we call a show. That was very good. Can you teach me how to do that? Um, I well, it's hard, very hard to teach. You have to really work on your craft. And, and if you're really interested, I could um, I could just give you a quick lesson at some point someday. Yes, I, I'd like that very much. Tomorrow, mm. tomorrow morning, nice and early, like five well, o'clock. Oh, sure, why not? Mm. Yes, when the, when the sun rises, I'll be here. That's so. Okay. That's early. Sure, fine, whatever. Okay. Good. I'll be here. Ah. We'll see you then. All right. We'll All right. see you then. So the ne- the rest of the evening goes pretty much the same. Uh, you guys have some more drinks. There's some dancing, uh, and Delroy comes out and teaches some uh, forbidden dances, and you guys all uh, go to bed and enjoy the rest of your night. Next morning, bright and early. Uh, you want to wake up, Bolt, nice and early? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll wake up early. <laughs> you go out, you meet Gregory, you have a conversation about how things happen. What do you exactly want to kind of teach him or tell him about, about what he's asking? Um, so I I take out the boomstick yep. that I had from last night, and yep. I just sort of explain to him, yes, now you see, and I'm pointing at it with like a screwdriver, you see, this part here is you have to make sure that it's twisted just so, and then this part over here needs to be like that. And then when you're finally ready, well, here, yeah, you do it. <laughs> okay, and he kind of does it as well. Um, and he, he kind of fumbles around with it uh, a little clumsily, but, you know, kind of uh, is trying to make you proud of what he's doing, but he's not doing very well. Uh, um, that, it's very close. Uh, here, let me try. And then I, I do it, cast bonfire again. Yeah. With Whoa, it. that's uh, so cool. Mm. I'll, I'll yeah. get it right. I'll get it right. I'll keep practicing, okay? All right. Well, um, so this one's mine. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Can you make me one? Um, oh, well, maybe. That'd be great. Uh, I'm sure my parents would love it. Oh, uh, ooh, actually, that's a good point. <laughs> it's very, not very much <clears throat> uh, good if, uh, to, if a parent wouldn't write like this. Okay, see you later. And he kind of turns around and he runs off <laughs> on the beach. Bye. I 
Rock up extra early for this five second exchange. Bye. <clears throat> and now you're kind of um, out, uh, kind of alone on the beach at this point. Um, and the fishermen are starting to put their boats out uh, to fish <laughs> for the morning's catch. But that's pretty much uh, that. Uh, what do you want to do for the rest of the time until everybody else wakes up? Um, do I see, uh, what was his name? The, who's high harpoon I had misplaced? Uh, João? No, he's not out yet. Oh, he's not out. No. Okay. <clears throat> but um, you kind of, yeah, if you, if you want to just kind of sit on the deck, um, look over your schematics and kind of your drawings and start to think about, you know, how maybe you can improve your, your harpoon and stuff. Yeah. Improve yeah. the harpoon, the catapult, harpoon yeah. catapult. Yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Cool. All right. So you uh, kill some time and eventually you all wake up and people are starting to gather. Uh, it's around nine o'clock. Uh, breakfast is served uh, and it's a continental breakfast that is included in your room fee. But there is bread and some potatoes uh, and some salted pork that is put out for everyone um, and fresh squeezed juices and all this wonderfulness. You guys enjoy your breakfast and you wait until about noon uh, when the shark hunting tournament is supposed to begin. Uh, the shark hunters begin to assemble on the shore. They start to affix their harpoons. Uh, they're sharpening their harpoons as well. And there's about a half a dozen shark hunters at this point that are kind of ready and waiting to go. Bolt, are you going to join them? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll put my schematics away and start going to, near them. Okay. Does anybody else want to join in the shark hunting tournament? I do. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on the dock yeah, okay. and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play some songs, play some okay. tunes. All right. I'll hang out with punk rock. Okay. Yeah, the, the night before I would have slept outside somewhere. I wanna yep. go like ten feet into the woods and just be in my shell. So in the morning I'll look for snow and okay. kinda go and sit with them. Okay. You find them at breakfast time. Is there anything specific you want to talk about? No? Okay, so you guys just sit with them and yeah, chat. Just listen to the music. Okay. Gaziel, you want to join the shark hunt hunters? Oh, of course, yes. Okay, and are you using your Warhammer for this? I would like to use... Well, I'm not sure the Warhammer would work, but I do have javelins. Yes, you could You could absolutely try and use a javelin. Use a javelin. For sure. Um, but you imagine... Give me a survival check. A survival check. Okay. 17... Okay, with a 17, um, you realize plus that you Plus three. You're, oh, yes, plus three. So 20. 20. With a 20, you know absolutely that you're going to have to fix a rope or something to these javelins, or they're just going to kill the shark, and then you don't have a way to kind of reel it in or take it anywhere with you. Uh -huh. um, so uh, you have rope as part of your uh, uh, adventurer's pack. So if you could um, affix, you, you're going to try and kind of affix rope to it. I'd like you to make a sleight of hand check to try and affix rope to the, to the javelin. What is a sleight of hand check? That's part of the skill. So uh, it's in your skill list, and then you just add that to Ah, uh, sleight of hand. Got yep. you. A three plus a, three. a one. Four. Yeah, you think you did great. Um, <laughs> you're pretty happy with the way that your rope is tied to your javelin. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, you do this. You, you, you tie it up. You go, woo! And woo! then your javelin flies off. And a couple of the vacationers kind of duck as the javelin flies over their head and embeds in the sand not far from them. <laughs> um, that you go over and you, yeah, yeah, you go over and you, you pick it up and you kind of like sheepishly walk back over and um, uh, Delroy kind of stands up. He says, all right, y'all ready to go. Wait for my signal, all right? Yeah. You guys are all watching. Uh, the harpoon, uh, the, the hunters kind of get into a crouch position and are ready to go in. Well, all of a sudden, the ground beneath your feet trembles and starts to crack. One of the docks actually, start. Uh, you hear it, crumble and fall into the ocean and the sound of screaming starts to fill the air as a stampede of the beachgoers starts to flee the beached area um all of a sudden as you guys look out into the ocean 
A chorus of shrieks adds to the cacophony as shark hunters start to turn and run from the water onto the beach as they are pursued by humanoid creatures with, with, with what appears to be fish-like heads and slick, rubbery skin. And they're carrying spears and tridents as they start to charge the shore. Once again, an aftershock hits and the uh, ground begins to tremble again and shake as people start to scream. The ships start to rock in the water and that is where we're going to end the session for this evening. Oh. <laughs> no! Oh, man. It's a good thing I'm Guys, wearing all my gear. Guys, we didn't die gear. session one. Hey. You the first session. Hey. You're still alive. Hey, I give you a whole vacation. <laughs> this, this whole vacation session was meant to follow out from Into the Mist. Oh, um, thank you, thank you. Just so you could get a little Thanks, bit of a wonderful kind of downtime, sip some drinks, uh, do some dancing <laughs> before uh, the craziness begins. But so that is Matt Mercer is coming to... back as one of the villains <laughs> next week, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're not. <laughs> not yet. Uh, so yeah, thank you everyone for watching us at home. Again, it was a record mm -hmm. viewership night tonight. Sorry, we've gone an hour and a half after our usually scheduled time i appreciate our players for sticking around i know you guys were getting tired i saw some yawns uh, and some nodding over there but uh really really appreciate it uh again join us next monday for into effort uh, into the mist see that for tides <laughs> of wild mount episode two which will be the continuation of this story i want to thank our sponsors again as always sirenscape for being our main title sponsor to WizKids, to dwarven forge to mithril armories and to hero forge our new sponsor we're so grateful and thankful for all of them for helping us do what we do Knowles's marvelous tutorials this sunday night i'm not sure what we'll be painting yet but i will be announcing kind of the month ahead of time as soon as possible and remember if you liked what you saw tonight make sure that you follow us on the dnd twitch and on the realm smith twitch and consider making us your subscription for the for twitch prime as well as uh just a regular subscriber because it's great you get all kinds of fun uh, wonderful benefits from it. And uh, the last couple sessions, we've had people actually gifting subscriptions, which is a really nice thing to do at this time of year, especially given uh, what's going on in the world. You guys have a wonderful week. Uh, take care of yourselves. Stay home. And thank you for making us uh, your preferred apocalyptic viewing uh, entertainment experience <laughs> for the evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Good night, Jay. Bye, guys. Bye. Man, I miss you guys, man. <laughs>